You are now listening to the Chicago Clubhouse Podcast. My name is DJ Vince Adams. I absolutely appreciate what the Chicago Clubhouse crew is doing for the city of Chicago. Hey, young world, what's good? It's your boy Bernard Barian, a.k.a. B. Twice. What up? This is Steve Davis, former Chicago Bear wide receiver. Hey, my name is Lemuel Smith, a.k.a. Lemonhead, formerly of the Chicago Bear. What's up? My name is C.J. Watson, former board guard and bench farm creator. This is two times six man all star ball of Ricky Deuces Pierce. What's up, people? This is uh, Chicago radio legend Rick Party, the voice you hear everywhere. My name is Pee Wee from the movie House Party. This is Megan Martinez from the Good and Funny Podcast. Hey, this is Bubba Ball from the Shits Podcast. Hey, this is Nika from One Shot Wellness, rubbing from the ATL, dropping some drips on that Side Town Clubhouse Podcast. This is Sherry, and you're rocking with the Chicago Clubhouse Podcast. You are now rocking with the Chicago Clubhouse Podcast. You're now rocking with Chicago Clubhouse Podcast. And you're rocking with the Chicago Clubhouse Podcast. And you're rocking with the Chicago Clubhouse Podcast. Where they think they know everything. 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 But they don't know shit. But, but they don't know shit. But they don't know shit. But they really don't know shit. But they really don't know shit. But they really don't know shit. But honestly, they don't know shit. Hey, man, I smell something. I smell something. I smell, I smell, I smell, I smell podcast. The Chicago Clubhouse Podcast Show. <laughs> they really don't know shit. <laughs> you already know what time it is. You see this Eddie Jackson jersey right here? Take this. This dude literally just took my soul. So, I so I didn't, I didn't like playing with Red Farm at all. <laughs> you could have waited until the draft if you wanted to look at another quarterback. You didn't have to sign Andy Dalton, who is really nothing but a backup. Evander Holyfield is 58 years old. What you want to fight a 58 year old man? Oh man, he wants to. He wants to keep fighting. Because he, he want to like, fight him. <laughs> yeah. Okay, it's an exhibition. But, yeah, it's an exhibition because you know but this ain't Drago old. and Apollo Creed, man. Ain't nobody about to. Man, fight. Uh, Martin <laughs> and Tommy Hearns was an exhibition. You saw what happened to Martin. <laughs> this could hurt. Thanks, Hayden. Not the best. Okay. All right. That run tough for real. Man. Yeah, man. <laughs> he, he, he like tougher than some grown folks I know, man. That as a coach, your job is to give your players the best opportunity to have success. Michael Jordan, when he came back at LeBron James' age, he was a straight up nothing. It is blasphemy on this on this on this computer wait, wait, right wait. now. I'm gonna tell you something. Without Dennis Rodman, I couldn't see them winning like they did those second three championships. I can't see it. I, I agree. And now I'm the voice of Sports Center on ESPN. Now on Sports Center tonight, LeBron James and whatever. Do you guys really post how exactly to tackle correctly? Because I see it almost the week now. People cannot tackle like they did when you guys played. But do you guys practice tackling? At all? What's up? Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. And welcome to the podcast where we think we know everything, but we don't know shit. I want to give a quick shout out to that T Biz for this beautiful shirt. It says, fuck them and their mamas too. Fuck them kids and their mamas too. Uh, for you kids watching, I'm just kidding. T Nick love the kids. Chicago Clubhouse, we love the kids, man. But um, quick shout out to her for this sweater. We want Mark. Yeah, Mark is coming, but right now you got me. Goddamn, deal with it. But uh, 
Yeah, so, but it's good to have you on here, George. Good to have you on here. Yeah, yeah, we want Mark. Yeah, he coming, he coming. Don't worry. Um, Yeah, so last night I, w- I went to the Bulls game. I wasn't able to go to the Bears game. And, you know, I hated that. I hated missing the Bears game, even though they're sucking this season. I hated missing the Bears game. But the Bulls game was a, a big bright spot. Uh, the Bulls have been balling. They they've been balling, um, even though they were they were a little bit short yesterday. Uh, shit, they still played a good game. They beat the Lakers the other day. They they playing some ball, man. But uh, before we get into any of that, I got to bring them All Star team. First up, my man, the stat man who knows every single stat since the eighties and nineties, basketball and football. My man, JB. What up, what up, T? What up with you? Man, like, you know, yo, bro? man, it's the holiday season. You know, we in the mood for giving, so I'm just going to give some love to the Bears. Even though we took that L, you know, we, we did play some inspired ball, man, and I, I'll take that. I'll take that. I like I like some of the things I saw. But we'll dig into that a little later. Me too. I did, I did get a chance to uh, catch some of it on the abbreviated version on the Game Pass. So I was able to see some, and I, I I did I did like what I saw from Justin Fields, man. I did like he's been taking some licks though. Oh my god! Yeah, he we don't take it a beating. After a while, we gotta stop blaming stuff on rookie mistakes. You know, this is week what week 15, 14, Yeah, 15. He is deep into the. I, I want to see no more jump passing on the screens. Oh <laughs> my god! But you know what? I don't want to see. I don't want to see sliding and then someone hits him in the head and his head just bounces off. Yeah, I don't want sliding. to see that no more, man. Because he slide up like this, he don't get down, you know. So <laughs> man. All right, but let's introduce another part of the All-Star team. My dude, X Factor A B. Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing today, man? Oh man, nice. I'm good. Yeah, we good. Can't complain. It's the first day of winter. Merry Christmas, mother. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that was aggressive. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> I'm in a good mood today. I don't know why I just woke up on the right side hey, of the bed. Man. I don't aggressive know aggressive like those bulls. A gr- yeah, because <laughs> I had to watch that horrible Bears game. So instead, I went and after the game, late night, watched the whole Bulls game after, just so I could be in a good mood going to bed. Because you know you ain't going to bed happy watching that Bears team. Good God. Ugh. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's all I got to say. I mean, it, it, it was bad, but it wasn't that bad. It, okay, okay. Real talk. It, Real talk. <laughs> it was okay. Bad. Well, let, let me introduce uh, another part of the All-Star team. He's no longer the new guy. Uh, he's all over that prep, though. Cal on prep. Cal. Yeah, what's up, Cal? They were calling for you in the uh they were calling for you in the in the in the comments. George Smith, Smith aggressive out of the gate. The I think George wants to kiss you, man. <laughs> oh, hey, I see George. Hey. I see we see hold you, George. Up, we're all good. Everybody take a breath. Oh, it's a little early for all that kind of talk. I haven't <laughs> even got this right? drink yet. <laughs> so what's going on it? in the prep world, Cal? Hey, look, man, I'm an uproar. Wells and Schiller. If you don't know it, prep world was good, man. We had an upset last night, women's hoops. Number one goes down. We'll talk about it. I got the kids from Loyola Barstool here. Then we're going to talk some football. We're going to talk some, some hoops, some spring lacrosse. Uh, we'll do some trivia with JB and AB, and then we'll get them out of here off to bed. Okay. All right, man. All right. We'll holler at you in a minute then. Yeah, man. All right. Later. Bye-bye. So, uh, I guess we're not necessarily going to start up the baseball talk yet, but we have my my main man in here, uh, the king of Chicago White Sox baseball talk, uh, and one of the pioneers of the Chicago Clubhouse Network, my man, Bucks. The voice of God is here, everybody. He's back. 
What's up, Bucks? It's the most wonderful time yes, sir. of the year. <laughs> the Man, voice how of God is here. Get that low. <laughs> what is up, gentlemen? That was a lot of pressure that you just introduced me like that, like the king of White Sox baseball discussion. Like at least, at least within the Chicago okay. Clubhouse Network. I don't know. J- JB, JB's up are. on game. JB's up oh. on game. And l- let it be known, AB is the only one with the mute button, with the censor button. So this is true. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> else's curse is just going to fly, right? This is very true, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you hey. can catch it. I mean, mother. Stop. <laughs> I hit the wrong button. <laughs> I got to get my fingers ready, man. You got to well, be ready. No, I got dump like, button. no dump button. Heat I got up. like a touch of Tourette, so sometimes <laughs> I might just spaz the. Oh, how about the bulls, man? Oh I'm man, I'm back on those bulls. I I don't know why. You know, I know. I understand. You oh, still wait, have to wait, be wait, dedicated wait, wait. to Bears football. Hold on. Oh. You got a birthday tomorrow? I do. Oh, hey. oh, oh man. Man. Hey. Happy birthday. <laughs> Hold on, let me, let me. The plunk number one fan. Cheers yeah. to you, my brother. I don't have to more. You, brother. Happy, <laughs> happy early birthday, birthday, man. Thank you, gentlemen. Absolutely. I'm drinking happy the I'm, I'm I'm going soft tonight. Uh, hey, hey man, what you doing with that chaser, man? <laughs> Whatever. Did you works, get that out brother. of your purse there, T, or what? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is handbag. <laughs> He's got a fanny pack on now, or what, man? Says man, the man, man that takes bubble baths with with <laughs> right, lavender calen, uh, candles. You damn right. Lavender dude. candles yep. and bubble baths. Hey, and you got to throw lavender in that bathtub while you're at it, man. I you love got that relaxation. You throw rocks out of your ain't, glass house. Get your ass out of there's here. There's nothing wrong with the little relaxation. There's no, that sounds wrong. good to me. But, but I love man. it. Hey, look, I, got no problem, chaser, I got no problem with, with, with Seagram's wine coolers, uh, bubble baths, all of that. You know, at this at our at our age, you know, it's about you know self care, brother. You know. <laughs> Well, it, well, it is a girly drink, but sometimes it is a girly you know, drink. Fuck out of here, Melissa. It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday. <laughs> in Maybe my I'm day, going to work tomorrow or something. So, in uh, my day, that was Kool Aid. So, right. Yeah. <laughs> with vodka. That's the warm up. <laughs> Kool Aid with some cheap vodka in it. <laughs> but I don't know why. Look, I'm here to drop a bomb. I don't know why y'all are wasting your time watching the Bears anymore. I'm sorry. Damn. We. Well, we have. The Not Chicago wrong. Bulls, yes, sir, to talk hey, absolutely. about. Absolutely, I know, I know. I wish we could have both. I wish we could have both. I it's wish coming. Have both. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. You're right. You're right. It's coming. Actually, we're gonna have all three. Okay. White Sox, Bulls, Bears. I don't know. I mean, I. You know, I, I love, I love, I love the Bears. I love the Bears more than the NFL. That's why it's been hard for me to watch NFL this year because you can't help when you look at other teams, you kind of like think, oh, can my team beat them? Or And then no matter what game I look at, I'm like, well, no, nah, my team can't beat them. They can't beat them. They could beat them, but they probably won't. You know, it's just – it's so disheartening. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> That man. sounds so familiar to me. <laughs> like, well – Maybe Justin will break out this game. Oh, no, he won't. Well, Damn, maybe like, the defense will come back they... to normal. Oh, no, they won't. I, I'm sorry. I'm not I, – I don't know shit. Let's take it back old school. I don't know shit. You know <laughs> what I mean? But, like, man, at this point, why don't they just let the boy just fly? Like, like the up-tempo offense. Just, just let him get in the rhythm and play. But once again, we're in week 14, 15. Team. And Nagy is still out there trying to concoct and think his way oh, into a victory, and let's let's run this play now. Like instead of just at this point, let the boy get some reps, let him get a you know get get at this point going and just play some football. Just play some football at this point. Open it up, see what the kid can do. 
You know, let, let, let the kid just play some football. Like Nagy, you're out of there. Yeah, we already know what your playbook is about. Yeah, well, but and one thing about too. One I mean, thing about Nagy though, I did see last night him running around yelling like a madman. Like he knew he was about to lose his job. That's because the referee job in that game was hot garbage oh, at, really? at best. Oh my god. I mean on both sides of the ball across the entire game span, it was hot garbage. Bad calls all over the place. Late hits, um other players getting knocked down and the Bears intercepting a ball that was really a hold brought I mean literally basically tackled a guy and then one of our guys caught the ball. Because there was no one else around and right. no call there. I mean, holding calls. You could, you could go down the line. I mean, it right. it was a hot garbage Look game this. for us, them, and the refs. The whole damn. I game. know. I know they do this with the broadcasting teams. Like when it's like a bad game. Yeah. They put like the B and C teams. Do you think they do that with the refs now? Like, well, I don't even. I think, think yes and no team. because. When you hear certain referee teams, they'll tell you, hey, this is a referee crew that calls a bunch of holding, or this is a referee crew that's known for letting you play aggressive. Yeah. So it's known coming in that, that there's tendencies. Now, I have a problem with that because if we're playing straight up between the white lines, every call should be even for both sides. It shouldn't be one or, or the other. And it's like, well, this guy throws a lot more holding calls. No, play by the letter of the law, the rules of the book. That's it. That's all. That's you like do it baseball, or a guy like Joe West be calling the worst balls and strikes, but then it's like that's what he does, you know. Yeah. I mean, and a guy like Angel Hernandez, who's just mm. a, a POS, like and thinks he's bigger, he thinks people come to pay to see him. And I get and I guess it's across the board, it's always been that way. You know, there's always that human element of the refs and the umpires that and the controversy that comes along with them. Um, I don't know. Like, you know, I don't think a bad referee crew makes a team worse than what they are. Like, we have a bad football team. Yeah. I don't think a, re a bad referee crew is like – I mean, it shouldn't dictate the it, game, I feel, yeah. Emilio, but there's a lot of aspects on both sides that – you could say you. that, you know, that this call and this call and this call were right. This game, this outcome really could be 100% different. But you mm -hmm. can't go into every game thinking like that. Just like you said, Ooh. you you've, you can't use that as an excuse because there were many other plays, red zone opportunities that they just shot themselves in the foot over and over again. And all it is, it's just bad discipline. It's, you know a lack of leadership at this point for me. It's nobody's really taking the reins. One of the massive things I noticed last night, and there were people on both sides of this argument, my guy, Tevin Jenkins, running over whenever Justin Fields gets knocked on his ass. You go look at that photo. There's one bear in that group of three or four Vikings offensive linemen, and he's yes. standing up to all, or sorry, not offensive linemen, the defensive linemen. And he's standing up to all of them by himself. He's fighting for his quarterback. You don't see that anywhere else. You don't see anyone doing that. I see guys like Jalen Johnson, a young, very, very, very good corner. He was calling out his team last week saying that, oh, you know, we've got a whole bunch of guys that have quit. We've got a bunch of guys that haven't quit yet. He's mm -hmm. trying to be a leader. You got guys like Tevin on the offense who are trying to be leaders. You got guys like David Montgomery who are trying to be leaders. So at least some of these young guys are trying to pick up the pieces and trying to move forward, knowing that they're going to be here next year, knowing that they wanted exactly. to change. Thank God exactly. for people like that. Because those, those are the guys who are still playing because they, they are. are playing for a job for next year. Yeah. And but unfortunately, you last there's night, so many guys who are like, oh, I'm out of here. Yeah. A Rob. Yeah, yeah, I think that speaks a lot to the culture, too, guys, because if you got your rookies, your first and second year players that are actually still dialed in, that's who you want to build the team around. Damn right. Damn you don't right. want to build the team around somebody that's going through the motions, whether they're in their contract year or not. Yeah. Exactly. You know, because as, as our friend Warwick Coleman always tells us, when you get towards the end of the season and you out of it, you're automatically auditioning for your next spot. If yeah. not, correct. the spot correct. of the team, but another team in general. Correct. So we already get, the, you know, that that's a mainstay as far as the locker room goes. 
But for me, to see that man, he had had three. At that time, I think he had three or four, like, false penalties and a hold, whatever. And he still was like, no, let's go. You're not going to treat my quarterback like that. He pointed to the ref and was like, you full of shit. Then he went to – I forgot the guy. He's the one that got the – um Strip the fumble big, on Justin. Yeah. Um Sheldon Richardson. Sheldon Richardson. Yeah. Got in his face. Although, you know, they yeah. always test the retaliator. Wait a Sheldon minute. Tevin, Tevin did all this? this? Yes. Oh, yeah. He was the only one who came yeah. to only one. Only <laughs> one out of all of them. Yeah. <laughs> only <laughs> one out of all of them. <laughs> and, 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 goddamn quarterback. Absolutely. Now, now let me give you the bad on that and, though, because and then a Fetty. That's what I was gonna say. Oh, I can't he runs over Terrence and literally starts yelling at his guy Tevin yelling at him about it instead of getting up and helping his teammate he's yelling at him about what he did and shoved him and I'm like get the hell out of here what he just got back he just literally got back he hasn't been he shit for two years garbage truck telling exactly. him what and do. then he's telling him how to act and he's and only be talking about, about a guy on his way out the door I mean yeah, he's got right. a foot and a half a yes. foot and a half his bags is that all of it and the only reason he's yeah. playing is because Larry Bourne was on the COVID protocol. Yep. Exactly. He don't even, even want to be out there. Him. No. He would never even seen the Fetty. Like, why? And then yeah. for him why? to, you know, and again, I can't wait till, you know, we're, we're not always privy to that information. But when the referees go through those, those game tapes, they used to do like the, the uh, last four minutes of the game and stuff like that. They're going to see that they missed that call on Richardson first because he actually took a sucker punch at uh, Jenkins first. Then he came in, and then he got – you know, they always get the retaliator, never the instigator. Mm-hmm. So oh, well. that'll be a lesson learned for the big – but I'm like, hey, if at any time I'm not mad at a 15-yard penalty, it's that time. I wasn't mad at it all. Plus, it was only half the distance, so it really wasn't a true 15, but that's another story. True. So why don't we pick up this football talk later because our guest is here charged up. But yes. what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna default bow out to my man Emilio Bucks, uh, the the uh, the moderator of Plumped, which is the actual baseball show. Um, big White Sox guy, like I said before, so I am going to bow out to him. I will be back later. Peace out. All right, bye. He gone. <laughs> he gone. He Nick. He's going to get another Ziffendel, white Ziffendel. Yeah. Spritzel. Another white Ziffendel. Emilio, if he Ziffendel come back with a Zima, Spritzel. man, I'm going to lose it. If he come out, do they still make Zima? If he comes back with a Zima, I'm going to lose it. He's going to, he's got the pinkies up on that, too. He's got to make sure to get the pinkies up. <laughs> wow. Hey, God damn it! I'm not gone. I heard all that shit. <laughs> you don't know that? We know you did. We were expecting you to. That's why we said you pop back in. <laughs> so you want to bring in? Let's get Emilio. Let's all you, let's Mueller? A Mueller? <laughs> a Mueller? Yeah, a Mueller. A Mueller. A okay, Mueller. hey, well, all right. Emilio we're, mixed Mueller. with Mueller. Is it a uh, Mueller? We, we got a young, a young up and coming killer. Uh, that's that made some really good time here on the White Sox. Um, like, man, like, you know, when we had some some major injuries some, to some key players during the year, uh, this guy stepped up big, stepped up big. Um, got some real, like, on-the-job training uh, to be able to come into a situation like the White Sox and uh, get some good, good playing time and, and to perform the way he did. Uh, I can't say enough. Uh, let's bring him in, Mr. Gavin Sheets. Guys, what's going on? All right, all right, all right. Uh, sir, what's going okay. on? Man? How you doing, man? Good. How about you? Great. Excellent. Man, thank you. Thank you so much for, for joining us tonight, man. It's a pleasure to have you here. Oh, absolutely. This is this is always fun to be on, so uh, I'm excited to be on. Right on, man. Right on. So, wow, man. So, let me just ask. What did you feel like after that last game? Like, and I know, okay, there's an obvious like disappointment and all of that, but like, what did it spark within you? And, and what, what was the energy of the clubhouse after, you know, frankly, what, what was kind of, you know, a disappointing 
um, um, the way it ended. You know, I think everybody in the organization, of course, fans had a little bit more hopes uh, for where the team ended up at yeah. the ear. So w- what was the vibe like? Yeah, you know, obviously the immediate thing was disappointment. Um, you know, we had such a strong team and we battled through injuries the whole year, but we still had a stacked team, um, you know, to win the division the way we did, um, to be able to clinch so early. But, you know, for us, it was we just wanted to get back. You know, we were already itching to get going again. Um, you know, that that crowd, that atmosphere was was second to none. I mean, we, we got to play in Houston and, and, and do that away series, but then coming back home, it, it wasn't even close. And, uh, you know, that, that was what we all wanted. We just wanted to get back and, and, and kind of run it back next year. So, you know, obviously disappointment, but um, we're ready to go and do it again. Right on, man. So you would say, like, it wasn't like, it wasn't like a stinky feeling. It was more like, come on. Like, and you said it, you said run it back. Like, yeah, yeah, it was, we got a taste of it. And, you know, obviously mm-hmm. the, the, the COVID year really doesn't count because, you know, there's no fans and it really wasn't the atmosphere, right. but, right. um, you know, getting into it this year and, and getting a taste of that. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, we're ready to get back. So l- let me ask you, like, uh, like you're, you're probably aware there was a lot of talk, you know, when the new skipper, Tony LaRusso came in uh, b- before the season. L- a lot of talk. Um, he exceeded, I feel like, a lot of naysayers and expectations, yeah. including me. Including yeah. me. Uh, had a couple hiccups early in the season, but uh, looked like he really held it down and let you guys be you. So, like, did you feel like um, in any way you're a young guy coming in and then you're not only coming into the majors for the first time, but coming and playing for a guy like Tony La Russa, right? Like, did you feel like the culture was not matching with what he was bringing, or did you feel like you could still be like this young player coming in trying to to work his butt off? Or like, like, did you feel like there was I, anything I, like that? I, I thought he was awesome. You know, I, I I didn't know what to expect when we first made the hire. Um, you know, obviously, you don't get in the Hall of Fame without knowing what you're doing, and. Um, you know, obviously we were excited to to get a guy with his kind of resume, but we also didn't know, you know, it was kind of the same as you guys. We didn't know what it would be like in the clubhouse. And, um, you know, I, I couldn't believe how, how laid back it was, how fun it was, you know, how connected he was with us. You know, obviously what he does is is old school and that's just the way he does the business. But, um, you know, the way he has our back, obviously saw it a lot with the Abreu, um, you know, with him running out there. And and that's that's how we felt, you know, he, he had all our back. Yeah, I was at that game. <laughs> yeah, it, it was crazy, you know, to, to see a 77-year-old man going after a 30-year-old catcher or whatever. I, I loved it. I was I was all for it. I was, I was on deck, and, and he ran right by me to Abreu and jumped right over Abreu, and he was ready to go. So, um, you, you know, to see that for us, it, we feed off that. You know, we want to win for him, and um, he, he obviously knows what he's doing. He's got his resume, and um super connected with the team but you know for a young guy for me he was super helpful the whole way um you know just talking from experience with guys he's coached and you, you know just having confidence from day one and we just we all fed off that right on right on that that's awesome so like uh now you're you're a first baseman like really kind of like by trade or whatever like yeah. that like uh were the other guys kind of helpful? Like Abreu, I think it's kind of like a given. He was probably helpful with the position. But uh, like, how did you feel like? And and I know you came in and I really like Andrew Vaughn was typically a first baseman. Um, like, so was there any kind of like awkwardness coming in and trying to learn the position when Andrew Vaughn was kind of delegated to the outfield? because Mm -hmm. of injuries and then you were brought in to handle some first base duties did you feel like any awkwardness with andrew vaughn or how was that no andrew and i are actually super close you know we were technically competing in spring training but we were living together like i was living at his house um we're super close friends and um you know that's the fun part of it like we were we were helping each other out the whole way we're rooting for each other um even when i was in triple a at the time like i was rooting for him texting with him all the time and um you know, to come up and, and you know, obviously Abreu was huge for both of us. Um, he, he was a huge mentor offensively, defensively, um, you know, having to get out in the outfield as well, like like Vaughn. So Vaughn, we were talking back and forth about, you know, how to make that transition easier. Um, but Abreu was awesome for both of us. He it, The biggest thing he does is he shows us how to be a professional. Um, 
you know, he's it, he leads by example. He's the first one in there, last one out. You know, the hardest working guy in there. And um, that's kind of how everybody gets it is is we just watch him. You know, he's, he's not a very vocal leader, but um, if you just sit back and watch the way he handles his business, he, it, there's no question why he's the MVP. Right on. I like that answer. Yeah. So um, I had a question about that. You've you've really been mentioning all this stuff you've learned. What's your biggest takeaway from this year? Oof. Uh, There's got to be a lot for you being a rookie coming in. But. Yeah, I, I think the biggest thing for me personally is that, um, you know, I belong. I can hang with them because um, I think that's the biggest thing for a rookie. You know, when you get up there, you you've got no idea what to expect. You know, can you can you can you play there? Can you can you stick? Um, so for me, it was, it was realizing that I can, um, that I can play in the big leagues. So that was the first and foremost biggest thing. Um, and then the next thing was just the amount of work it takes to stay there. Um, you know, everybody wants to get there and, you know, when, when you make it, it doesn't mean you're going to stay. And, um, y- you know, you kind of look around and see the way the guys work. I mean, you see, you Monty Grandal, TA, Abreu, you just see the way they work day in and day out. And you're like, man, like this is, these guys know they have a contract for four or five more years. Like, I don't know what my plans are, so um, you just see <laughs> work it takes to stay there and, and to be a big-time contributor and, and win an MVP. And, um, you know, that was the biggest takeaway I had. Nice. Nice, nice. Jason, Maybe, uh, can I, go, go ahead, JB. Hold on, I just wanted to piggyback on uh, something Amelia Please. said a little bit with Abreu and everything and Vaughn. So you getting some of that um, experience at first base and stuff, but you've shown – you can hit with runners and scoring positions. You've shown you can hit for power. Like in the future, is it some mix probably of that potential first base outfield DH even? Is that something that you're uh, – What if you're even interested in doing that? Because I know you're going to do what you need to do for the team. But that would be kind of different, right? Sure. No, I – you know, for me, it's – that's why I even added the outfield. It's, it's to be available in any way possible. Um, you know, the more ways I can help out the team, the more ways I can get in the lineup, the more valuable I am. So – um, you know, if I can play, I'll call DH a position. If I can play three different positions, um, you know, that, that allows me to be run out there every night. And so, you know, I, it doesn't matter to me on a given night, which one I'm playing. Uh, I just want to be in the lineup. So as long as I'm swinging the bat at some point in that game, uh, I'm going to be, no, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so as long as I have the bat in hand uh, a couple times a night, whichever, if it's outfield, first base DH, uh, you know, I'm going to be a happy guy. We will too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Pete, I want to ask you about kind of the elephant in the room, if I can, which to me is like the Astros, right? You mentioned yeah. Molina at first. For me, the, the whole playoffs really were about first baseman. Like, how fun was it watching Freddie? Like, obviously, they went, the Astros came through Chicago, they went through Boston, and then Freddie kind of stuck it to him. Like, quite frankly, if you look at the series, doing it in six, sure. how fun was it to watch him and like see him win a first World Series? And more importantly, have the Astros ever won a World Series? Is my question to you. And I'll shut up and let's answer. <laughs> you start, uh, I love it. Uh, you're, you're, trying that me, you're trying to get me in trouble. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna, no, you don't wait. My next question. I'm going to leave that Astros one alone. Uh, I, I think that, you know, for Freddie Freeman to win his first one, as soon as we got knocked out, I, I'm a huge Freddie fan. Um, watched him growing up, yeah. watched him in college. It's, uh, I've watched a ton of his video because obviously, you know, first base and left hand hitter, that's that's the guy you want to be. Um, I mean, he's an absolute stud. And for him to get his first ring, long overdue. Um, you know, obviously this this lockout stuff is tough for him because I want him to get a deal done. I want him to stay in, stay in Atlanta. Um, but he deserves everything. Yeah, he's pay the guy. Get. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to – he deserves yeah. everything he's going to get and more. Um, but to see him get his first ring and, uh, you know, that was awesome. That that was huge for him. Yeah. And, um, you know, that was, a, that was a great series altogether. Um, obviously, Houston – we know how tough Houston is, and um, you know I think that whole series is going to be different if, if they still have McCullers because yeah. McCullers was the guy that you know shut us down. If it wasn't for him, you know, two of those four games he shut us down, and the other two we we held our own. So, yeah. um, you know, I think when they lost him, that really kind of flipped the tide for for the rest of the series. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up Atlanta because what a lot of people don't know about you, Gavin, is that you were actually drafted by the Braves in. 2014 yep. but you didn't sign and you went to wake forest mm-hmm. why why exactly did you turn that down I, I i wanted to go to college um i wanted the college experience i wanted to you know i didn't think i was ready for pro ball i, I didn't think i was ready for the grind um 
you know, when you when you sign a deal, obviously it's not like football and basketball. You go to you go to single A, you go to rookie ball, you go. To, and I wasn't ready for that. I, I didn't want that yet. I wasn't mature enough. Um, wow. And I'm happy I was because I, I loved Wake Forest. It was I wouldn't be here today without it. Um, you know, just the I feel like you learn how to work. You get you get a work ethic there. And um, yeah, it was the best decision I made. Nice. Not a lot of young players are saying that. So the fact wow. that, that speaks volumes. Yeah. Right. So well, many well, get that contract tease yeah. and chase the money. You they know, want to get right after it. Yeah. Yeah. So and then they never develop. That's terrible. But you yeah. Know. So I had another question for you, kind of about the rookie thing. Um, mm -hmm. you don't have to answer this, but with the MLB lockout going on right now, um, a lot of people are trying to discuss about the rookie deals that you guys get and that it's kind of unfair towards the players. What are your thoughts on that going forward? Do you think that they should make any moves on that or they should leave it as is? Uh, um, you don't have to answer that. Yeah. I, I understand know, that. Kind of a, a plain, a plain <laughs> answer that. Uh, you know, I think, I think what the, the MLB players association is doing for us is, is what needs to be done. Um, you know, I think they've got our best, best interest in heart. And, uh, you know, I, I hope, I hope the biggest thing, I hope an agreement comes soon. Um, you know, I hope, I hope there's a spring training. I hope there's a, you know, I hope we're there. There's no delays. Um, you know, nobody wants to see a lockout. Nobody wants to see, you know, anything that, you know, prohibits baseball. And I think that baseball has come a long way, especially through COVID, especially through where we're at. I think this postseason was like the most watched postseason in baseball history. Um, so the last thing I want is to to have any delay, have any, you know, conflict with the fans or anything. Um, but I do think there needs to be some stuff done, and, and hopefully they can negotiate it, and uh, we can get back on the field and get right back after it. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Right on. Was there any truth uh, to some of the rumors going on that this CBA, once the, the strike is over, or the lockout, rather, is over, that there will be a reduction in games. Is that still on the table? Do you know? Cause I've been hearing some circulation about that. I haven't heard that. Yeah. I, I, I haven't heard that. Um, you know, I, I think that we're hoping to get going in spring training and then have 162 as usual. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know all the details, um, but no, I'm hoping it's a, it's a ready to go as normal and, and full season. Okay. So I Gavin, I got to ask you about the guy who coaches Gilman high school in Baltimore. <laughs> I yeah, mean, where, where do they find this guy from? Number one, uh, <laughs> so you're about I'll your just give you guys background. Yeah, I'm talking about your pops, man. Yeah, a, uh, a great Baltimore Oriole. Gavin was probably you. conceived in the height of 1984, 85, like when when your dad got there. We had just won a World Series. Like Baltimore is such a great baseball town. Like when they're when they're humming. Like, when I was 16 and 17, that was like them, Seattle, the Indians. I remember battling. I don't, obviously don't remember your dad. I was four years old. But, like, sure. what a great man to go back into the Baltimore community, Coach Gilman. How are things with him? What's, your, what's that relationship like, if you can take us behind the curtain? Oh, man, it's awesome. Um, so I, w when I was born, he had just retired. Um, and so, you know, for me, that was that was pretty cool because, you know, obviously with our schedule, it's tough. You know, it's tough to be around all the time. And, um, you know, I had him 12 months out of the year. My sister was obviously – you know, back and forth, traveling all the time with baseball. She's older than me. Um, but I had him 12 months out of the year, and I still got to, you know, grow up in the, the Orioles clubhouse when he was doing stuff. But I got to see it from, you know, kind of like a, a fan's perspective with, you know, get to go to signing autographs with him and, you know, go to Fan Fest and stuff like that, which was which was awesome for yeah. me. And then um, – so that that's kind of what grew my interest in being a professional baseball player. One, I love the sport, but, you know, just seeing the way he interact, interacted with fans and just seeing the excitement that he brought people was – uh, you know, something that I thought was really cool growing up. Like it, it didn't make any sense to me because I hadn't seen him play, but, you know, just seeing the way people responded to him was, was pretty exciting. And um, yeah, he took over Gilman when my eighth grade year, um, right before I got to high school and they were three and 16 before he got there. And then they went 27 and five his first year. So wow. uh, he, he turned around the there program you go. pretty big. And um, yeah, it's been, we had a great time, um, you know, having him coach me. Some people were, you know, w wondering if I was going to like it or not, but we, we just got even closer through it. Um, you know, he, he's been – obviously, he's been my main coach and my main hitting coach, my main whatever through this whole thing. So, um, you know, we've, yeah. we've just been tighter and tighter through this all. Need to watch, man. Yeah. Hey, one, more, one more for you real quick. 
Freddie Prince Jr., Summer Catch, or Bull Durham, if you were going to pick one out, which, <laughs> which, which, which your baseball movie go to? Oh, man. Oh, man. I I think I know. It can be any of them. But. I'm going to go Bull Durham. Uh, I think, you know, Summer Catch is cool. I played in the Cape, so I kind of get all of that. You know, it's cool to play in the Cape and, and, yeah. set and just kind of know the, the areas and stuff. But uh, I think from a few – Pure no baseball. offense, you're closer to Freddie than to Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. No offense. I agree. Uh, um, but no, I got to go with Bull Durham on that one. Yeah. If you had if you had Sandlot in it, I would definitely go Sandlot. I'm gonna go Major League. Oh, yeah. I like Major League. <laughs> JB, I'm with yeah. you. I gotta go Major League. Major League's a good one too. All day. But uh, All I day. had a fan question uh, come through, Gavin. You already no. said, obviously, Freddie Freeman. Being from uh, Maryland, we know you're going to love Cal Ripken Jr. But who else was an inspiration or just an idol of yours growing up in Major League Baseball? Oh, that's easy. It was Ken Griffey Jr. Uh, everything okay. he did, I was I was all over it. I mean, who doesn't play wiffle ball and do the Ken Griffey Jr. stance? I mean, I was <laughs> I was that. all over him. I, right. He was favorite. Um, yeah, all the home run derbies he was in. Just growing up, I was a huge fan of his. And so uh, – yeah, that's a that's an easy one for me. That was a layup. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, speaking of legends, like let me ask you, you know, <laughs> being around that 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 Baltimore squad, like, did you get to be around uh, Ripken? Have you met him? And one of my favorite players of all time, <coughs> Murray. Who? Eddie Murray. Oh yes, yes. Um, so funny. Cal is. My dad and him were drafted the same year. <clears throat> My dad was actually the first pick, and Cal was the second pick. Um, oh, okay. They were both out of high school. They were roommates from single A all the way to the big leagues. Um, so they're, they're best friends. They're still best friends. Actually, when my dad took over, Cal's son is two years ahead of me at Gilman, and he said the only way he was going to take over is Cal, if Cal came in with him. So that those were our two coaches at Gilman. Um, wow. So I, I know Cal very well. Um, lucky enough to to grow up with him and you know not think of him as the baseball player but him as the person and uh nice. you know i got to uh, i got to stay with him all last year during covid and yeah super close with cal he's he's a great human being obviously a, a huge you know baseball advocate and um you know what a what a great role model to have um but you know what a wonderful guy and eddie murray as well i've, I've been lucky enough to to be around him as well and he's a character he's awesome but uh that man could hit, so it's fun it's talking hitting with him. Um, but to be around those two guys is, is pretty special. Right on. I, I got a couple. I got an arbitrary question. Who's who's your funniest teammate? Who on this <clears throat> White Sox team is the funniest in the clubhouse? Uh, I got to go with Billy Hamilton on that one. Really? Probably. Wow. Boom. Oh. One of my favorite teammates I've ever played with. Um, really, right on. He was, <clears throat> he was awesome. I mean, just the excitement he had on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, he knew his role in the team. Um, yeah. He, he just, he bought in and was, a, and was a huge team guy. And, so uh, much fun to watch him this summer. <laughs> he was that awesome. Was so much fun. I mean, he just, he's the perfect team guy. You know, he he yeah. was with us the whole way as a young guy. He had my back the whole time and. Um, he was awesome. All right, who's the most slovenly? Sloppy. <laughs> oh, no, no, what? Who's the most sloppy, slovenly? Like doesn't shower after the game. Oh, come on, but what a word to ask him. <clears throat> really, man, I don't, I don't have anybody on that one. I'm going to stay away from that one because I feel like I could... <laughs> who's the stinkiest player on the team? Your wise beyond your years. Yeah, 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 you yeah, don't yeah, want the lock. You don't stay away from that one. Nope. I'm not touching that. I'm not All touching right, that. So one I, 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 I asked him the question that he I couldn't break him on that one. Somebody's gonna be waiting for me in spring training. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you think I stink, Gavin? Really? All yeah, right. Seriously. Right. Fastball. Yeah, I'll, here I'll show you. Hey, we were talking about Baltimore athletes real quick. Like my Mount Rushmore, Gavin is obviously Cal. I would put Ray. I would put Michael Phelps, and then that fourth one, it's like there's so many good athletes, right? Like Johnny Yu, like where do you go? Like, And we talk about Baltimore a lot with the, the correlation to Chicago. What's your take on it, just being like 
knowing both cities, do you, do you feel like it's a similar city at times? North side, south side is a little bit different, obviously, but like, what's your take? On right, Chicago, I, think, I think it's very similar. Um, Chicago's got a bigger feel to me. Um, I love the north side, south side rivalry. I, I love it. I got to experience it. I didn't play. <clears throat> I played in Wrigley in that one, and and I just thought that was the greatest thing ever. Um, yeah. And then being from the outside and getting in and seeing a taste of that in Wrigley was for us to to sweep them there was was pretty fun. Um, so. I, I don't think you can yeah. beat that. That South Side, North Side, that's something that Baltimore doesn't have. And um, right. when I got a taste of that and getting, obviously, my first taste of Wrigley, that was that was pretty special. Um, I'm right there with you with the, the Baltimore three, though. Those three guys are – the fourth guy, I think you got to go with Johnny Unitas. But, um, you know – Yeah, Brooksy. There's a lot of debate. You, you know, there's Brooks, so many good Brooks, ones. The guy you can't leave out, too. Yeah. But um, those first three for sure are – Undisputed. Do you see Michael at all? Do you do anything with him, or you see him on the trail, or over at on campus at Under Armour? I haven't. I, you know, I've seen him. I've seen him in person, but I, I've never talked to him before. Um, but yeah, talk about us. Talk about a freak of an, an athlete. You're like you're an incredible. Dive into his regimen, man. You're eating. You're eating calories all day, and you're burning them right yeah. off. Like what? what you're talking about being the best of your sport. That guy. Uh, no doubt. That guy had it. Yeah. I have, I have another question, and this is on behalf of my partner in crime, Kristen Pratik. She always asks all of our professional athletes, when was your welcome to the bigs moment? What was the play, the hit, the moment? And it could be a good moment or even a bad moment. Yeah. What was that, that moment when you yeah. were like, all right, we're, we're not in Kansas anymore. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Yeah. I, I think for me, hmm, that's, that's a good question. I, I think for me, when I, the first, the first day I saw my name in the lineup, um, that, that was it for me. Cause the first time I came up, I didn't play. And, and so it was like, you know, it was a cool experience to come up. I came up for two days, Bonnie tested, you know, had a false positive test on his COVID. So mm-hmm. I was just kind of a, a hold in the place guy for two days. And then I went back down, um, so when I came up the second time and saw my name in the lineup and got to go out there and stretch and, and get ready and, and see the fans piling in and, you know, you hear your name walking up to the plate, that's when it all hit. Um, because it didn't it didn't hit the first time I got called up and was sitting in the dugout, everything. It, it didn't hit me. You know, I just felt like kind of a fan that got to sit in the dugout. Um, like I got yeah. some VIP pass. Yeah. Yep. Right now. Like this is cool. This is cool, but this isn't, I haven't made it yet. Like I didn't consider it my debut because, you know, I got to wear the Jersey for two days, but you know, I, I didn't step in the box. And so, um, you know, hearing my name get called up and walking up to the plate, um, lucky enough to get a hit the first at bat, which was pretty cool. Yeah, but man. that, that yeah. whole, that, that whole moment, that was the, the kind of, I've made it. Um, in a bad way that I've made it to the big leagues is like your first, your first 0 for 3 game where you have people in your DMs being like, don't ever pick up a bat again. That's like, whoa. Oh, <laughs> it's like, man, we didn't, we didn't have this in AAA. Like in AAA, you go for 3, you don't hear for anybody. But right. you go for 3 in your first game of the big leagues, it's like, hey, you go back to AAA, don't pick up a bat again. It's like, all right. right don't ever get right, right, right. <laughs> That's welcome crazy. Chicago. Jeez. Yeah, well, welcome to Chicago. I'm going to try not to go for 3 again here around here. <laughs> yeah, buddy. I got to tell the quick DM story if I can, man. There's a kid who I, I like used to teach gym on the south side of Chicago. And this kid one day he shoots me a screenshot of, of him and Gavin and says, you got to see this, Cal. Do you know Gavin Sheets? I said, I know who he is. Like, he's a Baltimore guy. I got to get it. Gotta. And the screenshot says, Mr. Sheets, thank you so much. The kid bet you guys to win and you to Homer. And, and your response was what? He, he said he bet 50 bucks and he won 500 because we won and I homered. And I, I just responded. I saw it. Just responded. Ah. Should have bet, bet more. <laughs> should have bet more. Ah. <laughs> yes, sir. So true. And so great. That's changing so a little bit, though. Like, put it all on black. What did you say? Yeah, man. It has. So it's changed it. I think, I think people are more invested in baseball because it's an analytical game, right? Like, you look at it. It's the thing I like to bet the most. We talked about it a little bit, Gavin, like, you know, you're going to start on defense at home. And that's like a Ken Burns philosophy. Like what a crazy game where that's where you start defensively right. and at first base and how important that is. So like, that's something for me that I always watch. I'm so impressed with you guys and how you go out with that mindset and that you might have to bat last to win. 
So it's sure. like there's not a, there's not a better game for me from an analytical standpoint. Yeah, yeah. To to really quick piggyback onto what you're saying, Cal. Like, yeah, you know, people talk about all of the, the you know favorite metrics on analytics, the new analytics started in baseball, but I really feel like it made it more interesting. Like, you have more people than ever. I feel like following like and more yeah. new fans. Um, just just those little tidbits, those little interesting facts that like I mean, shout out to the you know the research crew for for MLB that comes up with all of yeah. that. Like I, I enjoy it personally. Like all of the, you know, I mean, runners in scoring position is so like minor compared to some of the other analytics. But, sure. but like, like I, I really enjoy it. Now, as a player, you know, how, do you? How difficult is it to just make sure you don't get too caught up in those numbers as a player and just go? Because you can look at a sheet and they'll say, "Well, Gavin cheats in this in this situation is only hitting this," and like. Like, how do you just, like, block out some of that and stay focused on just going out there, swinging the bat, yield your glove? Yeah, that's an awesome question because when I first got up, I was shocked at how much information we had. Um, you know, I thought we had a lot of AAA because we, you know, a lot of the same scouting devices. But when I got to the big leagues, I was like, oh, my gosh, like, this is right. – this is nuts. And at first I was reading everything. I was looking into everything. I was, you know, my scouting reports went from, you know, what I thought the guy was going to do to, you know, I was just looking at the numbers. Like this is what he's going to do based on the numbers and almost to a fault. I mean, when I was DHing, <clears throat> you have I like five iPads in the dugout and you can go through your bats and I was breaking on everything. I was like, and then I got to the point where like, this is too much. Like I, I, I've never played like this. I can't start doing this now. Mm -hmm. Like so I, I was just kind of getting in my mind so much with the numbers, the data, the mechanics. Um, that's when I took a step back. And, you know, I watched I started watching a lot more video and I started looking at less numbers just because if I wanted if I had a bad game, I wanted to have a bad game because it was my plan. I didn't want to have a bad game because the numbers told me that this guy was going to do something. And, and so when I kind of took ownership of that, that's when I started to have more success. Um, Nice. You know, it was less about, you know, what the number says and more about what I think he's going to do and what my strengths are. And um, <clears throat> that was big for me because you have every data, every scouting metric percent that you want to have. And you can make you I mean, you can find five different ways to attack a pitcher, um, but only one of them is going to fit you and what your strengths are. And so when I figured that out and watched a lot of video and figured out what, you know, what, you know, if he faced the Astros a week before, I'd see what he threw to Alvarez and Kyle Tucker and those guys. And so then I could get a plan based on, you know, what I felt he, he you know, had success with the week before and, you know, not necessarily what the numbers said he had success with during the whole season. Excellent. Lo love that answer. Love that That's answer. And glad That's a that. damn good answer. Especially, yeah, like you said, you still got to play the game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, I don't want to. I don't want to go home and be sitting there thinking, man, if I want it, would it be, I probably wouldn't have made that scouting report on my own. I just went by the numbers. Like that's, it's your career. It's your, it's your numbers. It's, it's, you don't want to be, you know, living by a computer the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. Man, Cause that's crazy. Right on. So what are you working on the most this off season? I mean, obviously it's, it's going to be your first full year in. Um, is there something that you're really trying to key in on for this season? Yeah, I think uh, <clears throat> I, I made a swing change right at the end of the season, kind of like yeah. two weeks in, and um, it, it really clicked. And and I'm just trying to get as consistent as possible with it um, to have as much success as possible with it. And then, you know, the other thing is just getting acclimated to the outfield. I'm getting as many reps as possible, um, you know, to try to feel more comfortable out there because obviously – Jose Abreu is Jose Abreu. You know, you're not kicking him out no matter what you do. Like, I could go hit 30 home runs and 100 RBI. <laughs> Jose Abreu is still going to be the first baseman. And, I, and I'm okay with that. That's that's just how it is. He's earned it. He's the MVP. Like, he's an unbelievable player. Um, and so my job is to find ways to fit into the lineup. And so, you know, if it's the outfield, if it's DH, whatever it is, I want to be able to, to, to be comfortable in whatever that spot. So my job is just <clears throat> getting acclimated to the outfield and, and being ready to go in spring training and, and you know, making the opening day roster and, and being ready to contribute. What was that home run like on on the final day game? That you it was off? It, That's it, what I was asking. What was your favorite home run? Hoping that you was going to say. It, it had it had to be that. Um, you know, until then it was the walk-off. But when I hit that ball in the playoffs, I mean, you know, one, just you, you, 
just the the atmosphere and Sunday night game, um, you know, getting to be in the open, to be in the starting lineup, to getting called on the field, you know, the lineups going out there one by one. Um, that was incredible. The fans were, <clears throat> that was a game I've never, I've never seen fans like that at a baseball game in my life. Um, and then to hit a home run the next day was just, it, I still get goosebumps. You know, I still watch the video. I still have the video on my phone. Um, still watch it, still get goosebumps. It, it was just incredible. Um, you know, at first I thought when the guy jumped, I thought he caught it. So it was like, it was like an up, down, up, down moment with my heart. <laughs> so <laughs> I thought a poster of emotions. <laughs> yeah, it, it was just a, an absolute party when that thing went over. Um, so, and it was nice because, you know, obviously the game was was 0-0 zero, zero at the time. Yeah, it was a um, big moment. Yeah, it wasn't, you know, obviously I, it didn't end up the way we would have liked. But uh, at the time, it was it was a big moment. The crowd was into it. And, uh, yeah, yeah that, was, uh, that, was, that was pretty fun. Yeah, the night before, you had a great game, too. And I, I, my favorite inning, I think, was the sixth or seventh, where I think you let off with a single and we put a crooked number on the, on the board. And I just, like, be, you're right. The atmosphere of that game, um, much different than the north side. Just a night game and pumping, and it was, it was awesome, man. It, it's, that's what I like about the south side. It's just, you know, it's kind of got a swagger to it. The fans have a swagger. The fans are chippy. It's just it, – it's a different atmosphere. Um, and <laughs> and we rally around it. And Yep. And I mean, when I'll never forget, you know, my favorite moment of the playoffs was still when when Larry Garcia hit the home run and I was on first base. Um, that was the loudest I've, I've ever heard a baseball game. Um, you know, I, I told because I got a base hit with two outs to make it first and second. And then I looked at our first base coach because they made a pitching change. And I said, man, if he goes deep right here, this place is going to erupt. And sure enough, it's like sure two enough. pitches. Long, he hit that ball. And, and man, it was just. I was running the bases like I hit it. <laughs> I was having so much fun around the bases. I, I felt like I had just gone deep to center. So, um, yeah, that was uh, that was pretty incredible. You know, again, awesome. Gavin, I got to tell you about the Southside Faithful. You know, we root our team on with a chip on our shoulder because we are truly uh, considered second, if not even third class. Sure. Uh, because you know the the spotlight is on the north side and pop culture, yep. and so uh, you know our our teams, like this team that you're a part of, even that old five team back then, it's just uh, hard working and not a whole bunch of flash. I mean, just, you know, so, some guys like that jewelry on your team. So. <laughs> So you so got TA on that team. On that team. You but, can't stay flash without talking about TA. I, mean, I know, right, right. But, Come on. But now. it's just like South Side is just about like, you know, hard working, being the underdog. And so like uh we love our White Sox because no matter how good the team is, the city sometimes not all of the city, but sometimes they tend to look at us as, you know, we're the second team because sure. uh, of the of the Cubs lore. So you know, that wasn't a yes. question letting you know how important our socks are to us. And uh, and you mentioned yeah, the rivalry. It is serious. It is. I don't hate the Cubs or anything like that, but that that's part of, like, like when you come here and you play for the Sox, we do want you to beat the Cubs, even yeah. if you're not a good team that year. <laughs> Just like Bears need to beat Green Bay. Right. The, the Sox need to beat the Cubs just for bragging rights. And I'm glad you got a, a taste of that and you see how got important the full, it got is. the full taste of it. I mean, yeah, I think the cool, one of the coolest things this season was, was when we took over Wrigley and, and, you know, our fans were the last ones sitting there. I mean, that was, yeah. I was looking around and guys were like, this never happens. Like some of the, the trainers who have been there 20 years are like, I've never seen this happen. I mean, our fans completely took over the stadium and that was, that was really cool, you know, to see the 50-50 split and then, you know, obviously to beat them and, and hear our fans yelling go Sox. I mean, that was uh, that was pretty cool. And that, that was a cool first taste, obviously, the rivalry. Yeah, you, you guys mean a lot to us baseball fans for sure. For sure. Absolutely. I want to thank you, Gavin. Three of my favorite White Sox teams, the 93-94 team, 2005, of course. My boys last year. Are you looking for <laughs> and good hopefully games? next year will be even better because because we're we're planning on running it back. All right, let's run it back. Right there with you. <laughs> <laughs> run it back, indeed. Yeah. Oh, AB. Before we let Gavin go, I know you have two questions for him, don't you? Do I? I think what? you do. 
Oh, Maybe right. something round and sliced. Uh, <laughs> all right, Gavin. <laughs> so we ask everybody this. <laughs> that's a good one for you. So you talking whenever, pizza? Oh, you know what we're talking about, Emilio. So every time we have a Chicago guest on here, which is every week, obviously, usually, yeah. but we ask them what is their favorite uh pizza place in Chicago. And Giordano's. You, thank you, sir. You got the right answer. Well done. Yeah, that's that's well an done. easy that's an easy one for me. That was the, the first one I had and stuck with it. That's you that's, don't have that's to me. change after the first one, brother. Hey Trust JB, me. we we're gonna we're gonna pick Gavin up and bring him out <laughs> south to an Italian fiesta. Oh no, no, hey, no. Hey, I'm ooh. gonna go with Gavin yes. over, over to Giordano's, the place where we know that we get good. Oh no, right. no, no, hold on now. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's the spot, sir. No, Giordano's no for deep Italian dish. Fiesta. Italian fiesta for everything else. That's so, fair. That's fair. Uh, I'm, right, I'm not going to get it. Every other pizza. Out. No, we, we're going to send yeah. something to the podcast. Trust me, it'll change your life. <laughs> so the second one is, do you have a favorite chicken place? Oof. Not really, actually. Well, you um, need to get over to Harold's and try some chicken. I'm going to say Tim never took you to, uh, to Harold's. I've never been to Harold's. No, I need, all, I, I'm going to need to hit Harold's next year. You need to. It's yeah, a one. Sure. Matter of fact, it's one not too far from the stadium on what is that, Emilio? Like on 43rd, I think it is. It's a Harold's not too far from the stadium. Oh, so, uh, I, I, Emilio am, looks so ubiquitous right? in Chicago. You will find the Harold's. Yeah, I'm like, like, literally, it's like on, like on 43rd and Todd. I'm not a big chicken guy. Oh, That's gonna be one of my first stops when I get back. Bro, there. I gotta try that out. Best chicken in the city. That's what Terrence keeps telling chicken. us. If you like chicken, Gavin, yeah, it, it, it's a good chicken. Yeah. All I know is I, I didn't have a bad meal in Chicago. I know that. I mean, I could, I, I could eat at a different yeah, place. Yeah, man. Oh, hey, man. What, what, did you, what did you keep from your rookie year, like, uh, souvenir-wise? Like, So, uh, I got um, hit, what? I got my first home run ball back, the first hit, nice. and the first RBI. Oh, I got those three balls. Um, nice. And then I got all my jerseys. So, I, I, I'm going to keep all my jerseys. Okay. Um, got the the white one framed, so uh, yeah, that's, up, that's up in the bedroom, and um, also got the lineup card from the debut. So that was pretty cool. Got everybody right. standing. Um, so so those are the those are the keepsakes. Now, when you said all of your jerseys, you meant every jersey that you wore. Well, just the just our four options. Just so okay, I, I okay. The, the white, black, gray. And the uh, retro, the South Side, the Black yeah, South Side, the ultimate like, one that says South Side. Did you guys get to keep those? Because that was new this year, right? Yeah, we didn't get to keep those. I think. Okay. Uh, oh, I think, uh, hopefully we're rocking those again next year because those are pretty. Yeah, sweet. man. Yeah, no, those was those was dope. <laughs> those were sweet. Yeah, we were all pretty excited when those things dropped. Nice. All right, man. Well, hey, thank you, Sheetsy. Yeah. You're the man, yeah. dude. Yeah. We, right. we gotta do it again. And we please, guys, come back, man. Please. Yeah. Anytime. Yeah. I appreciate it, guys. Yeah, yeah right, it was amazing right. having you, man. Appreciate you it. You have a good one, sir. All right. Woo. Our buddy. Gavin, Gavin, Gavin. Man, uh, he's got so me hyped. Got he's got got back. <laughs> I'm ready for spring now. Damn. We just got to get past the lockout first. That's, that's I know, man. Right now, I know. Man. I know. So I heard actually today that they're talking, but it's about other things besides the financials. It it It's like more like, like, prepping when the all-star game's coming and like that kind of stuff, really like not really the financials that they need to be having and about the rookie deals that I, I kind of knew Gavin probably wasn't going to answer that question yeah, anyway, right. but I like that you asked though. I have to ask that question because yeah. it is a massive problem. I think it is at least Emilio because you can't go that long, you know, what is it like 26, 27 years old and have your first free agency deal then? That's absolutely and ridiculous. There always have been – they've been way too long, right? But every major sports, if you go back and look at it, they always tweak these rookie deals some kind of way. Basketball did yeah. it. NHL did it probably the worst. But then yeah. football actually made the most sense, even though it cost them a lot of money. There are no more Sam Bradford's come out, didn't throw one game and make $80 million and was a bust. Yeah. So, you know, it, it always kind of balances out. But in baseball, though, like, man, you can come up literally at 17, 18 years old 
and not have your first free agent contract till actually eight to nine years after your first game. Yeah. Like, that's crazy. It's a problem, man. But I actually heard some other rules that they were looking at. They're actually looking at whenever free agents leave, they might give up um, – <clears throat> A pick like they do in the NFL, so we might start seeing the uh, compensatory picks being a thing in baseball now. That's a big change too. I mean, what do you think about that, Emilio? Well, you know, the one thing that when it comes down to with baseball is the is that lack of a salary cap. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so that you know when we try to compare to other sports like you know the, like the main the big three or whatever like baseball i mean uh, basketball football like that always that that throws off any comparison as you can make i like i you you can't completely just follow what the nfl has done or what the nba has done but however with the lack of the salary cap what we do see is more parity in baseball we don't yeah. see only the same teams competing yeah, kind true. of you know they've tried to break away from that recently in the and in the nba because i think that's where it got the worst well um i feel like there's a reason for that though amelia because in baseball you can get hot at any time it's not necessarily as star you know uh, driven as the nba is but you know having one of the you know, lowest salary uh, teams in the league in baseball is obviously, you know, probably better, you know, for us as fans who want to see those small town guys get up and, you know, win a chip or something like that. You know, like the Tampa Bay Rays, great example, you know, very low budget. They made noise. But when it came down to it, that that star quality kind of took over this year, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's, why, I mean, it's why I think we love like we love Billy Bean, right? We love Moneyball, Oakland Athletics. It's like and that's the part I think Emilio was talking about. What we're yeah. really into. Yeah, but what happened at the end of Moneyball? They never won anything because right. it wasn't that. T- you hit a like, wall. Analytics can take you so far, and then Correct. just like Gavin kind of said, you can look at analytics all day long, but at the end of the day, you got to get out there and play. Yeah. Absolutely, I mean, like true, analytics true, is terrible. But true <laughs> enough, see, see, it it goes in, in droves. Like you know, it becomes the hot thing that works until it doesn't. Moneyball yeah. worked until it didn't. Yep, it yeah. went it really work. Uh, um, Like getting these guys it worked in the regular season, Emilio, but there you it, go. it never worked when it mattered most in the postseason. That's what I'm trying to get to. So go back, go back to this, guys, and remember, like you just said, Cal, Moneyball, Billy Bean. He was kind of ahead of his time. He had a bunch of mathematicians. He took a different approach to baseball, right? But then there goes when you're a skipper. And, Emilio, you know this. Sometimes you got to go with your gut over those numbers. You see how a yeah. guy's playing. You see how a guy's walking, how he's moving. Fill it you out, man. Fill out the line of play. You know, forget yeah. the fact what, what, his, what his numbers are in this situation. Look at the bright lights. Look at the moment and say, hey, look me in my eyes and tell me you can go out there and produce. Yeah, and if you're not, I mean, I hate to you know cross sports, but we do it all the time. The last two weeks, Jim Harbaugh might have cost his team. I'm sorry, John Harbaugh might have cost his team a playoff because mm-hmm. the analytics showed that he was supposed to go with this play and that play. Yeah, we we yeah. saw that with another coach. Um, I forgot who that was. It just said uh, about the analytics, and they lost, uh, and they're going to keep going for it on fourth down when you're leaving points on the board. Yeah. You know, sometimes you just have to play the game to be smart. Look at what's going on. Look at your opponent. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I got to get – if I got – I'm just – again, I'm not a head football coach. But if I got Justin Tucker, then I'm going ahead and kick – and my defense is just Best played right in out. history. I'm going to kick – I'm give me these give me these points, right? Give me these, this, this, this point after. I'm going to tie it up. And my defense has been killing the last three drives. I'm going to ride that momentum in the overtime and try to win this thing. Because guess what? It's one thing to stop it when you don't know it's coming. It's another thing to wait for it to come to you. And then it's like you almost know this is what you got to do to win. Yeah, right. That's why I say analytics. Analytics cost 
Pete Carroll a second Super Bowl. They did. Four downs uh, in a row. You yeah, all he had that was just stupidity. Just, he had to turn around and hand the ball to a monster. That was stupidity. <laughs> that was a bad call. That was that, you know, According to him, he said the analytics showed that on that no, down, you were stupid. He said the pass. Arrow analytics. And guess what? Analytics, no my ass. You should. You, Ow, you I got, got four downs call. on the ring. Hey, real, real quick, guys. Call over, over to your star and call it a day. Right. Real, real I quick, really... I, I just want to wrap up the baseball thing. Go ahead, go ahead. Um, um, you know, I don't think analytics are ruining the game. They've changed the game, and they improved the game. Any Cubs fans out there, your Cubs won a World Series based on we did. getting guys to so, – We did. It's not an analytics bashing party, like, but no. with anything, it works until it doesn't, until yep. you take it too far. Yep. But hey, guys, I just want to say I appreciate being here. I had a great time. Yeah, hey, good to see you again, Bucks. Yeah. Man. We love having you, Bucks. Suffering through this bear season, I'm enjoying the Bulls, but the Bears <laughs> are just unwatchable. I love them. Go yeah. Chicago. But just just to talk about my White Sox again here in December, the day before my birthday. Hey yeah. guys been a pleasure. Let's hand it over to Cal. He's yeah. got his guys coming in. And, and Get a man, Emilio. And info. And Emilio, please do not be a stranger. If if you are frustrated, you're more than welcome to come up and always chop it with us anytime, man. Oh, All right. Man. You got it, man. All right. You got it, man. All right. You All right, guys Cal. Well. All, right, on you. All right, guys. We're out. Right, Mr. Box, you guys want to hang out? We're out until you're ready for us. All right. Come on in whenever. Like, Whatever you want, we're gonna just talk a little bit of football. We're gonna talk a little bit of social media. We're gonna talk about what this like this, these platforms mean for these kids right now. Um, and then we're gonna do some some pop culture trivia with you guys and get them get them off to yeah. bed. They're on throwing fall break or Christmas break, so they should have some good energy. But like, let's give them a little bit of the floor and see what's what. Absolutely, guys. So, just like we were saying before, it's time for our buddy Cal on prep. You can take it away, Cal. All right, guys. T. Nick, I don't know if you can hear me or you can get my guys in. We should have two groups of three on the way. There they are. Two, <laughs> four, seven. Yeah, we're ready. We're ready. How are we doing, Cal? There they are, the fellas. We got three up top. How are we, guys? We're doing well. We're glad to be here. Good. Talk to me about break. What's going on? You guys are done? Yeah, we're we're finished off finals, and you know we're ready to go. Our mind's been on this podcast for a while, so uh, okay, get it going. So tell me about the plat. Tell not me. Tell the listeners at home, right? Tell everyone who's in the chat, like, what is Loyola Barstool? What are you guys doing? What are you covering? What are you talking about? Yeah, here's the thing. Plot twist: We don't actually run Loyola Barstool. The founder, he okay, it said, "Hey, can you bring like five or six guys on?" represent our core values in our school. And Cal, I also want to thank you for making this happen. Like all of us have been looking forward to this. We've been getting pumped. You know, I feel like we're kind of celebrities now in school. Like I, the other day, like one of the last days before break, I was like, I was in the student center. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm going on Loyola Barstool and you guys aren't. And Jansen here came up to me <laughs> and he was like, Roach, you gotta be humble, man. Got to contain your ego, and I was like, "Shit, Jansen, th- thank you for telling me to do that." And I, w- I was humble. I was humble. What? Are, yeah. So wait. What? Talk, what are? What is the athletic philosophy of the school? Like, what does it mean to be a rambler? I mean, well, what does it mean? from from my perspective, I mean, uh, yes. When everything I mean, being a part of some, yeah. Being, okay. When being a part of this is special, and it. It goes deeper. It goes deeper than sports. And, you know, these are my best buddies that I met at Loyola. And the bonds will go deep here at Loyola. And uh, special to be a part of. Put your hand up if you played football this we fall. We all do. We're all football players here. Everybody played football. So talk, talk about Lockport. Talk about that game. Like, talk about what happened. Oh, we'll, we'll, man, we got was, the perfect guy for yeah. you right here. Danny, 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 What's well, up? Tell, yeah, tell me about Lockport. Tell me about where you guys ran into a wall there. Uh, I mean, we didn't see a team like them, obviously, all year. Uh, they, they just had a bunch of all-state athletes. Like, they were well-prepared. They are one of the only teams that were as prepared as us coming into it. So, we, had, we never saw a team like that. 
And yeah. who who's playing what in the spring? Who's playing lacrosse? Um, well, he was actually um, we replaced him with uh, Gimli here. He's he actually is at a family Christmas event. But he's okay. Be a big part of the lacrosse season. Gimli, okay. Heard he's a gifted athlete, and with his leadership. The Loyal Ramblers should be back at state next year, hopefully. Yeah, shout out to Pumps running. So we have also like on top of mind for me right now is Coach Tom and lacrosse or in basketball, right? What's going on with hoops? Where are we? I saw a couple oh, games. I think got geez, suspended man. or moved. Yo, we were just at uh, we were just at the game. We all went to uh, Notre Dame. I think it was Red right, Falls. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was, not, not Notre Dame. And yeah, I'm telling you, the the atmosphere. And that building was electric. Like, yeah. there's war, I would like to say. Like, it was a tough end, but the fellas played really well. And, um, um, we're looking forward to the next one. Yeah, it seems like it seems like every game is getting – student sections are becoming bigger, right? And it's like, you guys have a responsibility right now, Jack. Like, you have a responsibility to represent, like, the school. Right in like the in the in the right way. Great responsibility. That's yeah, right. Yeah. And I do know, think uh, the, the the one thing is we. I think they're they might be cutting out here, Cal. But they are. They're they're frozen. Uh, let me bring in let me bring in AB and JB real quick. I mean, I definitely think it, it helps when we get all the the football guys at the uh, basketball and hockey games. You know, yep. it just, it just yeah. adds. A lot more noise, a lot more energy, and you know we're pumped to support our friends. It's, it's it's all good stuff. Good. Let me bring the guys back in real quick. AB, JB, if you want to come back in real quick, I want to I want to do a little bit of, of trivia oh, and get these boys off to bed. What's up, fellas? What's up, guys? How you doing? How we doing? Good, man. Good. <laughs> all right. This is this is how I think we should do this, Alan and JB. Yeah. I, I think probably the, like the best way of five questions of three categories. So okay. we have some baseball historicals. We had Gavin on. We got some rock chalk Jayhawk with some hoops. And then we have some pop culture questions. Sounds so, good. If you guys ever want to talk Chicago sports, we're here for that too. Okay. That's what we do, brother. Hey, That's what we do. Here, you guys. That's where we at. All day, every day. <laughs> Why don't we do this? Why don't we have – so we have three windows. Why don't we have the fellas – on the upper right there, mute me so you can't hear. Alan JB, turn me down as well. I'll ask bottom right, and then I'll come to the fellas, and I'll come to Alan and JB to bring it home. And then, does that make sense? Just turn me down. And when I'm done talking, I'll give you a wave. We can go to the next group. So we'll go fellas from LA, fellas, Alan and JB. That, that. Appreciate Make sense? All right, put me down, unless, unless you are the fellas from LA. Fellas from L.A., here we go. Five questions. Baseball historicals. This is the only team to come back from a 0-3 deficit to win the best of seven World Series. Or, I'm sorry, best of seven series. What team? Oh, uh, we're back. Cal, we, our connection's, like, kind of bad right now. We keep cutting out. Sorry. The fellas up there? All right, we'll just go fellas from L.A. versus Allen and J.B. Yeah. Fellas from L.A., let me read it back one more time. This is the only team to come back from a 0-3 deficit to win the best of seven series. Boston and Red Sox. Boston yeah. Red Sox, very good. This team won the first ever World Series. The first ever? Yep. Are we dinging or are we letting them? Just, like, yeah. You're supposed to be on mute, but we can just go with like this. Allen, JB? <laughs> I wasn't doing it. First ever right? World Series? First ever World Series. That's Boston that's Red Sox. Again. Boston Red Sox. Yeah, Boston Red Sox again. Okay, this four-time champ and seven-time All-Star won three Cy Youngs with the Brooklyn Dodgers. I'll read it back. Four-time world champ, seven-time All-Star, won three Cy Youngs with the Brooklyn Dodgers. Was it? Eddie Koufax? Sandy Koufax. Sandy Koufax. Sandy Koufax. Uh, this AL team was home to Murderer's Row. Murderers wow. Row. Stomped. Give Stomped him, over the second year. New York, Yan New York, York Yankees. Yankees. Oh, Yankees. Oh, Yankees. Oh, Yankees. Oh, Yankees. about to say that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, last, last one for baseball. Fill in this blank. Aaron blank Boone. Aaron, Aaron Boone. fucking Boone. Aaron fucking Boone. Very good. <laughs> Aaron 
Boone. <laughs> Hello, JB. That's you. Uh, we'll move on real quick. Rock Chalk J Hall. Michael Jordan and what Showtime Laker led University of North Carolina over Georgetown in 1982? James Worthy. James Worthy. Yeah. James Worthy. James. Boom. <laughs> name one member of the 1993 New York Knicks. Just name one. Ewing. Uh, Patrick Ewing. Patrick Ewing. Come on, boys. John Bobby Sauer. Knight. Bobby Knight won. Ha- that is a good one. Bobby Knight won how many national championships? Two. Bobby Knight. I was, Nine, I was eight, three. You can steal. I was gonna say three. Three, 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 three to the fellas from LA. Yep. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. um, I handed him that shit. Two more in basketball. Kobe Bryant won how many championship rings? Five. 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 Draw there. Hakeem Olajuwon was born in what country? Nigeria. No, it's Nigeria. Nigeria. L A B. Yes, sir. Woo. Yes, sir. All right, last five, and let's get these kids to bed. Tiger Woods shot. Know, they're drinking shit. No, they are not. They're going to. They're going to bed. <laughs> Tiger Woods shot twelve under at what major championship to win his first major? The, oh, this first major shit. First know. major. There you go, JB. The Masters. Yes, sir. I was going to say that, but I didn't think I was right. What was it? Augusta. Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson just married what American singer? Sierra. 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 <laughs> He's off the draw, boys. <laughs> Me and JB tied. What on. is the, what is the national sport of Canada? Hockey. Hockey. No, no, no. no. Curling. 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 Oh, lacrosse. 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 Somehow lacrosse. Oh man. Two more to go. Who is Easy Money Sniper? KD. KD. There you go, the fellas. And this, uh, you know, let's give this to the guys down below. If they don't get it, you guys can steal. The Triple Crown is one of, is run at what three venues in horse racing? Um, Kentucky Derby. Kentucky Derby. Yeah. Think of Gavin Sheets yeah. and me. Where are we from? The only one I know, Cal. Okay, uh, A, B, or J, B for the steal? Belmont Stakes. Belmont. Well, and Preakness. And the Preakness. J, B <laughs> took us home. The Preakness. Preakness. All right, man. Let's get these guys out of here off the bed. Alan, old, JB, thank you. Old Bye. people win. <laughs> old people win. Hey, hey, much success to you guys in the future. Can't wait yeah. to see you guys yeah. again. Appreciate you, JB. Sure. Yeah. Do we win? Yeah. Do we win? Oh, there the guys fell with you. Hey. They got thermos right here. Sorry about that, guys. But you guys were way too choppy, man. Sorry. Uh, great holidays and Christmas. All the, and to you, Alan, and JB, you guys too. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Glad to have you on the show. You, Cal. Yes, sir. So, you know, we've been, we've been, uh, you've been sending us messages, cashing those over, cashing those under tickets. <laughs> and, you know, you know, uh, my guy, uh, Big Cat from Pardon My Take in Barstool, you know, he asked, him. he asked, he asked the doctors a question I'm very him. interested in. Very interesting. Okay. He said, uh, does the vaccine have any effect on sports gambling abilities? I mean, I'll just give you a few guys I know on a fucking heater, you know, on a tear. Eyes you know, <laughs> goes into the left shoulder. It all turns into a dumpster fire. Oh. <laughs> shit show. Absolute shit show. We want to know, I, I, know your take on that. Does the vaccine have anything, anything to do with, you know, decision making and, and stuff like that. The, the only thing it enables you to do is think more clearly, which is to save your money. So yeah. put your money away and don't uh, worry yeah, about what me. A, although myself, A, B, and J, B, we're all in the Vikings in the under. I believe we all gave it out. And all yeah. Came yeah. I mean, put yeah. your money away. But it, it is the most wonderful time of the year in bowl season. Uh, I don't know. Stay tuned for for Allen. Allen's been hot. I got receipts from that from AB that he's been out the window. That Bears game though. I mean, just like, Wait, no. Harry. That's what we need to talk to, Harry. Now I got a I got a question. Bowl yeah, season yeah. or March Madness? Bowl, bowl season. Bowl season. Well, I don't know. Uh, you know what? Uh, March Madness for me. It's got to be. Yeah. <laughs> me too. It's got yeah, to be March Madness. Madness. Yeah, 100% March uh, Madness. No, I, 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 okay. like, I'm sorry. Like, I don't need to see the potted soil bowl. Yeah. You know? there's, <laughs> just, there's just too many darlings yeah. that, like, upsets, too, and, like, stuff like that. It's, yeah. It's got to be March Madness. Yeah, nothing beats it. Yeah, you're right. Nah. 
Well, maybe we'll have you guys back in the fall. But until then, put your money or the season. Yeah, he's great. We want them back during the season. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah, man. Absolutely. 100%. Mark it on your calendars, guys. I mean, are we, are we seeing red? That's my last question. Are we seeing red? You know until we are. the Eastern Conference Finals, yes. You know I mean, we are. We're seeing the Bears. I mean, we're seeing. We're here. We're here. We're here for the next three months, right? That's our guy. Get your women stay next year, Cal. We'll come back on. All right, guys. Cal, I was at. Hey, have a good Christmas night. break. Merry Christmas to your families. Merry Merry Christmas, Christmas. Christmas. Thank you. See you guys. Later, yeah. Thank you, Cal. 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 Cal, thank you, bro. Thank you. Kids are hilarious, man. <laughs> Funny kids, right? Like they they're into it, and I don't know what bar Love stool. Them, man. Love like, it. Yeah, what a great platform, right? Good for them. Good for them just figuring it out. Absolutely. There's T. Maybe. Maybe T. Is he coming back? Hey, there he is. There he is. <laughs> we were wondering if you were I'm coming. back. I'm back. There he is. There he is. Like those kids, though, well, man. At, as to that question, are we seeing red? Hell yeah, we seeing red, man. We got I said until red. the Eastern Conference Finals. Dang. Those dudes are playing. Why? Why we gotta stop there? Why? We, right, we don't go on it right now. Go. Why? Come on, explain why. So, oh, you want me to do it? Oh, somebody do. I'm playing the Bulls music for so, you. Man. So, so right now, <laughs> as, as ecstatic as we are about the Bulls, they are playing great. They're playing above their minds. We finally got a team that we can root for. In Chicago basketball, other than the Chicago Sky. Shout out to the ladies. But realism is still a problem, bro. Milwaukee is still a problem in the playoffs. Yeah. If Kyrie Irving can only play in Chicago, yeah. that's a problem, man. Well, that's I mean, the other yeah. problem is the Heat team. are going to be the problem. Yeah. You like, name me one team that could be a problem. I, I can name, name you three. many teams. Many. I just named three. The the Bucks. Yes. The Bucks. Any the team the with multiple bigs is going to be a problem with this team. I'm sorry. They are too small inside. They cannot defend against bigger guys. Multiple bigs. Not multiple bigs. No. It's a problem. It like if if they have to center in on one guy, like they did last night, a Wood. You you know. That's one thing, but when there's multiple bigs on one team, like Milwaukee's going to have Giannis, they're going to have Boogie Cousins, they're going to have bigs that they're going to be throwing at the Bulls, and the Bulls are not going to be able to. But can't really that work to that. the Bulls' advantage, though? No, it can't. No, because they're athletic bigs. Not in they're a seven-game series. Stiff. There's they're no not stiff bigs. And remember, in the playoffs, all this cute 87 threes a game back and forth, that doesn't happen in the playoffs. It Shit becomes old-school, half-court, slow it down. Easy, get the right bucket basketball. It's, Who does it's that like we're talking about with baseball. Analytics only go so far. And then after that, what happens, JB? Real ball takes yeah, over. Real ball. The and only thing that's a little bit of uh, – they're, they're into a softer part of their schedule, which is like the one good thing. They go they go back-to-back back with Atlanta. They go to Toronto, Washington, Orlando. Washington again. Those are some winnable games, I think. Like we, where you can we, pick up. The Bulls can finish top five easy. I said top, at the beginning of the year, easy. the best they could finish was third. That's what I thought the best. The and absolute it's, it's still, ceiling. Three, we said three to six, and that's yeah. right where they are because right now there's still some trades to be made. Right now, I think I think they're still the number two seed, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I'd have to go look. but It's, it's either two or three. They, they haven't fell right, that far yeah. because New Jersey – like went on a little crazy, whatever. But yeah, everybody's kind of five, like sitting around the same marks of whatever they are. Right. Nineteen. Well, remember, yeah. remember, analytically, last year the Phoenix Suns should be the net, should be the world champions, yeah. but they're not. They're not. The Milwaukee Bucks are. Yeah, hard nose big. play by Giannis. Hard nose play by Portis. Hard nose play by PJ Tucker, who's on Miami now, and that just bolsters their roster. How many bigs do the Suns have? Two. Yeah, Two. Well, I mean, really one because the other I one mean, don't really play. DeAndre Ayton. Yeah, right. It, I want to say they do have Frank Kaminsky, but he doesn't play that much. Yeah, so they kind of have the same issue that the Bulls have, except their center's better than what we have. But so, I saw, I saw, I saw really good stats today. Exactly to why I keep saying this because I don't see them getting past teams with multiple bigs because all they have is Vooch. 
They've got to go make a trade. They've got to get another big in here. There's no way they're going to win. You don't consider Wood big? We don't have Christian Wood. Christian Wood's on the Rockets. No, no. We uh, we want Christian Wood. Yeah, yeah, no. The other guy that that, that has a similar build to him. Um, You're not talking about um, Tony. He's talking about Tony Bradley. Tony Bradley. Yeah, yeah. 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 Tony Bradley is a guy. He's not not Christian. He's a space filler. He's not. He's not a Wood. He's not a a good defensive big. He, I mean, yes, he does get a block or two here or there, but he's, he's not, not the kind of no. guy we need. No, I'd rather have Daniel Gafford. I would rather have Daniel Gafford. I, like, have Daniel Gafford. I would definitely rather have Daniel Gafford right now, but he's not walking through that door. But no. right now, so look, no. break break this down, T. You have one missing component of when he comes back, he's playing out of position, which is Patrick Williams, right? Okay. Vooch can give you, just like Christian Wood, a walking double-double. 23 and 10, 23 and 5, uh, 11, a couple of assists here and there. The difference is the athleticism, one, and two, Christian Wood plays defense. He's a rim protector, of which Vooch traditionally is not. Yep. So when you go against a Brooke Lopez, right, mm-hmm. and you pull Vooch out to guard a three-point shooting seven-foot-one center, guess what Giannis can do? Right. Just go to the hall on somebody my height. <laughs> Javante Green is going to have to guard six miles. On six to, on to That's not going to work. Javante gonna work. Green is not going to be able to contain him. There is no right. way that happens. So if you don't have him, maybe Patrick Williams comes back in time. I I doubt it, but I don't even think he's going to be ready to guard him. Now remember, he's going to play out of position too, AB, because he's technically a small four. His yeah, numbers but, actually drop when he plays the four. I feel like his numbers at the four defensively could be hold up enough but when he's guarding literally the mvp literally one of the best one of the best top three four guys in the world he's gonna have issues and that's why i don't think they're gonna beat them because they don't have a defensive big that can cover they that don't. guy then don't. Go, then go to the nets what is he gonna do against kevin durant oh javante it's all gonna be javante it has to be javante i don't know who else is gonna guard well, patrick him. williams is okay but he can't guard kd no, he can't. It's got to be Javante. Like, I think Javante did a good job against the Lakers. He I did. think he held LeBron pretty well. I think he, he can fill that role. But at the end of the day, just like you said, JB, once those switches come, once that kind of stuff happens where you've got a Brooke Lopez or a Boogie Cousins that's running out, he's going to be one-on-one down low against those guys in the post. That's a problem. LeBron had a lot of that, and he passed out of it. Thank, he thank God he did. I remember one play in particular. He's just he's just beating down the door. He had Caruso on him. It, right. He's just beating yeah. down, beating down. And then he turns around. I'm expecting him just to have a nice little layup. He throws it out of bounds. He tries to pass the ball. That's why the Lakers are not going to win anything this year because all they have is LeBron, and he's still too passive to do anything. Well, West remember, he's not confident in his low post. He's never been a great no, low post scorer anyway. Oh, when you're going Lakers up against Alex old. Caruso? Come on, well, man. Well, well, hey, how about, Caruso how about Caruso is a great defender, but my God. He like, is, but in fairness, remember, Caruso knows his moves from going against yeah. him for two years of practice. So it's not like he's just going against something. He didn't really want to get embarrassed by Caruso. He didn't want to get <laughs> – he didn't want to get his he didn't want to get his pocket picked, right? That top well, hey, I'm looking, how about how about how about DeRozan going for 38 and then oh, 26? God. DeRozan like, is a monster, man. He's a top three. I mean, a monster. He's a top three yeah, MVP man. candidate it's, it's only, right now. It's only one other person. Now DeMar DeRozan, right? Another yeah. person kind of written off, didn't know what he was, whatever. He's cool. coming to his own. A guy very seasoned, but he just gets buckets. He's efficient. Yeah. Throws analytics out the door because guess what? We're all in love with that mid-range game that he brings us. Ooh. Analytics show us that's we a We haven't had shot. that mid-range game since Ooh. Analytics, no, tell him. Like analytics that. show that that mid-range 18-foot is a bad shot. He's just right. go four more feet back and shoot the three is what they tell you. Bull, because look at what this brother is. You're Kawhi. You're, he gets to his spots, and he kills it at his spot. Yes. And, man – if you watched him whenever he was making those shots over LeBron, he looked mad. He looked hungry. He looked like he wanted to prove a point, and he's proving it this year. I hope it continues all year. Absolutely. I hope he can catch fire maybe in the playoffs 
and maybe that defensive big MVP. isn't as big a factor. I well, I the difference right this time of which I say MVP. works in Demar's favor is traditionally in those Toronto series when Toronto was going against Cleveland, it was just him, and then sometimes Kyle Lowry. Yeah. Now he's got three other people that can put the ball in the hoop. So this could be, like I said, I have them going to the Eastern Conference Finals just off the of seeding. Lonzo right? Ball, too. My God. Yeah, man. He played, played well last night. The Lonzo. way that he changed his shot is doing di- it, every. I love like, his new shot. The Pelicans and the Lakers are probably pissed about not having him on their teams now. because I, lo- I love what Io's doing. We talk AB about yeah. Io all the time. Io, I still yeah. feel – I still feel, call it taboo. I'm not taboo. Uh, call it sacrilege if you want to. I still think we should look into trading a package of Kobe White yep. and Patrick Williams for a Jared Allen type, right? Somebody that's rangy, 6'9", 6'10", 6'11", somewhere in that caliber, that can defend, has a nice little mid-range game because when it comes down to the to the playoffs, you know, you need those. You need those yeah. real protecting people. Um, we talked about Marvin Bagley. I don't know yep. what Sacramento's doing, but guess what? We'll take him. We'll definitely take him. You're going to have to give up for him, though. Um, well, that's why I said. going to have to give Kobe up White, from pick, and I don't think can't, you can we trade for from pick until next year. We can't. We have to wait till the end so, of next year because you can't do back-to-back picks. You but, basically have to swap out Vooch for somebody. Well – I'm not opposed to that only if I'm getting Christian Wood in some conversation. I mean, if you really want football. Christian Wood, I like Vooch, the way you man. I'm, I'm not swapping Vooch. Well, he had, a 20, he had 23 and 11 last night, so he didn't he play that. free throws I at like all. Vooch, so then man. as soon as they get to the playoffs, they're going to be fouling him, and he's not making free throws. And it, it could be a slump, but I'm looking at it more on the defensive side because, remember, yeah. a Billy Donovan team has anchors at defense at center. Kendrick Perkins, Steven Adams. You know, he doesn't have – all world ballers at the center position. He has defensive rebounders and defensive anchors. So if we yeah. can get somebody in there that can give you the same points as Vooch, but also give you the defensive production, that'll further the Bulls. Right I'd now, really get to Carl Anthony Towns myself. I would love to hey, get Cat Towns, but now to get Cat Towns, you're yeah. definitely giving up Vooch. You got to give up. Pick, yep. Or, you know. And, no, and. Yeah. <laughs> like, keep going. <laughs> hey. Yeah. Speaking of speaking of defensive production, let's jump back over to football. Okay. Let's talk about this Bears defense. Uh, this Bears defense was actually playing some football yesterday. Hey, look here, man. They gave up 17, but they, they were playing. That wasn't if, – if, if, if this even makes any sense, that 17 to me wasn't even a true 17. It really wasn't. No. Because you had know, two fumbles – yeah, fall, in, fumble the in, game in points. plus territory. In plus territory. Yeah. Right? So, right. to me, that makes a big difference. But what I'm going to tell you is this. We've been so critical of the Bears secondary all year. And we still are. We are, but. Not last I night. Feel, I, feel, I feel pretty good about what I saw from a couple of players last night. This in the secondary, player, just, just, just uh, Thomas Graham, right? As a whole, they played well. Kirk Cousins, hey, like him or not, the last four yards. games, Kirk Cousins has been on a tear. And he yeah. put up 86 yards. He, Kirk Cousins has been on an MVP tear Kendall the last Bill four Bush games. still sucks. He, he still I mean, sucks. he didn't play horrible that game. He was basically your number one. and He, he was way up to the other side, yeah, too. Yeah, I mean, he wasn't horrible. What I saw last night was – He can't tackle. You know how we always talk about, you know, how Eddie Jackson got his money. Eddie Jackson's not the same guy because he got his money. I saw a bunch of hungry, hungry guys last night who wanted to prove a point and wanted to make plays oh, on Deion the biggest Bush? stage of the no. – oh, Not Bush. Not no. Bush. Uh, Tabor, Tabor, Tabor was – Talking was about one. Tabor. I'm um, talking about as much hey, as we didn't the like The same him. guy that missed the pass that was Xavier. like the bread, bread basket. Xavier didn't play horrible. He had a couple bad plays. He was okay, but I like Marquis uh, Christian. Marquis Christian, Christian, Christian played right. solid. Yeah. He yeah. plays yeah. garbage too. That game, that first no, 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 game no, 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 against no, 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 the Rams, no. that first game against the Rams, that's a, that's he a was lifetime terrible. Ago, bro. Terrence, we talking about last That's night. a lifetime ago. Only. Yeah. Last, night, no last night. lifetime ago? 
That was like maybe 15, 14 weeks ago. That's, That's a, a long time, time in football. football. That ain't no damn That's life a long time. Ass time. <laughs> People change from the beginning of the year to the end of the year, man. I'm sorry. That's what it is. Okay, well, well, no, no. Let, let's entertain this. Let's entertain this because Let's. if you say they were terrible week one, and yet we're talking about them week fifteen as in they not that bad. That's production. I'll that's, take that. They've gotten impression. better. Dude, impression, not production. Everybody has a birthday. No, everybody no. has a birthday. He's progressed to be better. I'm Mark not saying he's a Christian world. has been terrible in more than one game. Yeah, so now yeah. he has a good game. All of a sudden, he's. I wouldn't he's even say he had a great what game. He had. He had, he had like said, an average. I said, look, I said he played solid. Yeah, he played like, solid. He has Graham, a now all game. of a sudden he he's decent. He's progressing. Graham, he's decent. Hey, listen, 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 I, listen. I'd say he's a four at best. A ten right now, maybe a five. Listen and listen well. I'm not mad at you for being overly <laughs> critical. I'm not mad for you being hurt. But last night against a Vikings team who is fighting for their playoff life, fighting for their coach's life, coming off a four game stretch where like Kirk Cousins looking like a world beater. They played well. The defensive line played well. They Alex played well. Ogletree played well. He did. Yeah. It was Come monstrous. On. And, Come on. I mean, if yes, you want to keep going on that, JB, Akeem Hicks held Dalvin Cook in there. The yeah. only time Dalvin Cook got anything was when Hicks was out of the game. And that was, and he still didn't get that much because he only averaged uh -huh. 2.8 yards a carry. Like, look here. The, who, if I'm not who? mistaken, wait, AB, wait, pull wait, up who? the numbers. Who? The Vikings as a whole, Cook? no, no, as a whole, they had what, like 187 yards? The as Bears a, had 370? As a whole, they had 193 yards. 193. And, you're, and you're right, the Bears had 370. So Mr. Dalvin Cook had 89 yards, but he had 28 carries. for. So that's 3.2 yards a clip. Uh, so not yeah. enough. he got most of that we'll whenever take, Hicks was out. That's what I'm saying about Hicks is that Hicks – I don't know what it is about Dalvin Cook, but Hicks does not like him. You could see it on the field all night. He was chirping at him like crazy. I guess they got a history of – They do. They do. They some, have uh, a history. I tell you what else I like. They Ooh, got buddy. a history. I tell you what else I like. What's that? Robert Quinn. Another of sack. Of course. He, he was on Kirk Cousins' ass. So, but and, you know why and he multiple was. Multiple hurries. Yes. Multiple why he was. Yes. He was going up against Alex Leather. I didn't see. Also a rook. I was no, listening no, no. to the game. It's Christian Derisaw. Yeah. yeah, sorry, Derisaw. Yeah, yeah, long Leather rookie. Is, sorry, is about that. Yeah. what did you say, Cal? He was killing him. I was saying I was listening to Kevin Harlan call the game, which was like interesting to me because I wasn't watching it. But he, it sounds like it sounded like Justin Jefferson ran a route for that first touchdown that like you weren't going to defend. And, like, that's who that kid is from LSU. Like, well, you monster. know what? Deion Bush got put in kind of a bad He did. Situation. He was put in the test 22 he because – He doesn't know how to defend that correctly. He should have been playing back off the ball, but he was he so been worried. Playing outside in. He doesn't yeah. know yeah. how to defend so, the Cardinal Milk correctly. He doesn't know <laughs> because he's not in the situation enough to know that, okay, he's got to play back on him because they're going to the corner. You, yep. know, you know Justin Jefferson's going to the corner. He's so worried about the curl route. In front of him, he kind of pulled one of these, and he just went right by him. Yeah, it sounded like it. Oh, Kevin man. Harlan, man, if you're ever looking to break something up, he, he had jaws with him. It was a good call. Oh yeah, yeah. But Absolutely. but again, we talking about we talking about Kirk Cousins, 86 yards passing. So if he had 86 yards passing, Justin Jefferson, although yes, he had a touchdown, he didn't do work against us. And I mean, that game's what he gonna normally be normally does. Right? That game yeah, going to be true. different if if you've got Adam Thielen in there. That's going to be a completely different game. I agree, but I, again, I mean, Adam Thielen is more that guy, like a Wes Welker type, who's going to get all those catches. JB, like not not as I'll much say Thielen. I'll say Thielen's player, more yeah. of a Cooper Cup. Oh, absolutely. Not yeah. a not not a Wes Welker because Adam Cooper Thielen can't Cup blow the top off. Cooper Cup was Cooper Cup, but it's not yeah. fair to say if Thielen was there because then I could say well. What if Allen Robinson was there? What if Khalil Mack was there? Yeah, A Rob would make no difference. I mean, I can say the same A Rob wouldn't make any difference. Nah, he wouldn't. But, <laughs> you know, I'm just saying, like, I can say the same thing about what if who was there and who yeah. wasn't there. Yeah, yeah. Same thing. But at the Hindsight's same time, on at that. the same time, I have to look at the Bears defense and say, damn. And you only gave up on paper 17 points. 
that's pretty that's pretty good with a bunch of no names i have a bunch of hardcore uh vikings fans that were actually telling me like this is just a bad offense and that it's it's not as much of the bears defensive players as it is the bad offense that they bring. That's because they're from Minnesota. Of course they're going to say that. They're shit. actually Chicago. Guys. Yeah, man. Negative. <laughs> I don't know. Anybody. I challenge anybody on this screen, anybody that watched the game, anybody that's listening to the show, go back and watch the, if you will, the abbreviated version is, or, or whatever you can get. The Bears were so terrible offensively that they got into the red zone six times yep mind you we scored nine points so that field right. goal and that touchdown we're not in the red zone this is a totally different game that field that field goal doesn't get blocked right that's 12 darnell mooney catches that actually holds on to that ball in the end zone guess what that's a bears victory you know that's a bears, the bears- they made, well, we all called it. We all said it was going to happen. We said Vikings in the under. They actually made history last night, though. They actually made history. They are the first team to ever have that many trips over the 50-yard line with no points, a missed field goal, Two points. under yeah. 10, and um, what was the other one? Uh, it's a trifecta. Who I just keep that There's four you, of them. AB? You it's some score. random stat that I heard today. <laughs> Some random like like it was all that plus something else. I can't remember the last part of it. That's gonna kill me now. <laughs> well, pro we'll job, man. We'll come. <laughs> yeah. Because right now, well. with all that being said, all that production offensively, three hundred seventy oh, yards. I remember but, now. Yeah. <laughs> I remember now. It was it was under ten. Um, three fumbles. Oh, three fumbles. Over over the fifty yard line. Uh, six times and they missed a field goal. They're the first team to ever do that. Field goal was blocked, actually. So it was, but you know what I mean. Yeah, absolutely. But again, I'm still looking at it like this: 370 yards. That's between the twenties. Call it what it is. Yep, that's the bulk of the yards. We had Jakeem Grant got hurt. He went out. Uh, yeah, he got Daz rocked Newsom. on that play too, man. He Ooh, did, buddy. He got hit. He did. Daz Newsom had two bad drops. Cole Clement had a bad drop. Khalil Herbert had a bad drop. So we had some things that kind of like pushed us out, which could have like maybe sustained some drives. Maybe hell, maybe would have got us into the red zone a seventh or eighth time. But Are we tired of seeing Cole Clement drop the ball? Yes. Can we yes. see more of Jeff? Yes. Can we see more of Horsted? Well, so that's, who, that's who, who gets touchdowns for Justin. He's the red zone guy for next year. That's yes. another thing I learned is that Horsted's going to be a red zone guy going forward. He is. Yes. So oh, where where's Jimmy Graham fitting all that? Jimmy Graham's gone. Bye. Bye bye. Golfing. He out. Denver. Hawaii. <laughs> Don't he still have another year out. on his contract? No. 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 Oh. Oh. Okay. It. No. Yeah. He's done after this year. And even if he wasn't, he's not coming back. There's no way in hell. But but I'm I'm back. I'm gonna I'm gonna look I'm gonna do. The glass half full. Because I saw what the Bears did to get down there. But unfortunately, Nagy being Nagy, some of the play calls he made, in the, like when they were on a 13, and he ran that jet sweep to the house, like, wow. Yeah. Like, this, look, as much as I hate this play, curl, curl, flat is what he should have ran because they went like this. It was a garbage ass play, but the defense literally went like this and spread it out. Curl, curl, flat would have been the, that's when you call curl, curl, flat. That's when you, but you know, Nagy, he's going to do the opposite of what he should do nine times out of ten on this team, man. So he he's definitely gone, right? Oh, he's a hundred percent gone. He's, I'll say this: he's not going to be fired before the end of the season, though. He's not. You, you well, think he know it? Well, listen. <laughs> you think he know he's gonna be fired? I think he so knows. Hold on, T. Yes. Cal, A. B. Let me get your thoughts. This is the first season they will allow conversations, week sixteen and seventeen, only if you have a coach that's been fired or a coach that knows he's not returning. Yeah. So even though they may not fire Nagy, I'm pretty sure they put the bug in his ear that he's not returning yeah so there might be some buzz the next two weeks fans stay tuned 
So yeah, we may have some conversations going on. Yeah. I had a birdie tell me that they get the um they basically get every week who's going to speak what days and it goes like throughout a few weeks, right? Mm-hmm. Nagy's booked the rest of the season. <laughs> So he's going to be here. So he's probably going to be there. But that's not saying that he's not going to get fired anyway. He might know it already. Because if you listen to him talk in these press conferences, he sounds like a guy who's not going to be around with with a Justin. Because the way that he talks about Justin is, you know, he's going to, like, be great. He's fine. Like, he talks about him as somebody who's really actually going to watch him from afar. Like, mm-hmm not actually coach him like that's something that i've really picked up especially the past couple weeks like i don't think he's gonna be here i think he knows it already but he's working his ass off to try to at least leave a good impression he looks wore out he looks just beat to hell and then after the game he looks like his dog died and he you think that was the show him. Or was that an audition for his next coordinator gig? See, that's what I think it is. Is, is coordinator gig? You didn't even say head coach. You say coordinator. Oh, his next gig coach. will oh. either be some type of analysis. Yeah. And I, I didn't say analyst. Yeah. I said analysis, meaning he's coming up with X's and O's behind the scenes, or he's going to be somebody's quarterback coach. Yep. If he's a coordinator, it's going to oh, be God, always a no. coordinator. Yes. Yep. If that's he becomes an OC, it's going to be an OC of a really bad team. He's going to be a QB coach. The Jaguars. Go to Jacksonville or yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think those guys. <laughs> Darren, Darren's and me immediately both go Jacksonville or the Jazz. Detroit. You know, stuff like it could be Texans. Some yeah. You never know. Dan yes. Campbell's crazy ass. I mean, he probably. Well, I think people oh, from the Andy Reid too like. <laughs> You take care of each other. Like Andy Reid will pick up the phone for him and say, "Like, he I think." Make a call, Cal, but 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 again, yeah. here we go again. Here we go he again. Didn't pick up the phone for uh, uh, Doug Peterson. Yeah, I, no. I heard no, but I heard Doug Peterson was kind of like snobbish. Like he rubbed rub people the wrong way. I that's why he didn't. That. That's why he got unceremoniously. I had a rumor Philly. today that 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 the Bears were interested in Doug Peterson. <laughs> That's an old rumor. It, it is, but it – I got – Okay, why would he leave? Why would, why would he leave about. where he's at? Why would he leave where he's at? That's a good question. you got a lot of bugs in your – bugs and birdies in your ear. <laughs> I do lately. No, but, I, I but like, why, seriously, but, think, see, that's why I said I mean, you have to sift through the rumors. Why he would wants he a head coaching job. Like, he wants a head coaching job again, man. Like, everybody, it's only guys that have that itch. Exactly. And so, of course, he wants, he wants another one, but – Okay. Let me give you a name. What if, what if Josh McDonald came? What, what, what do you Josh say? Josh McDaniels, you mean? McDaniels, excuse me. Gosh, I just butchered jo- – yeah. Like Josh <laughs> McDaniels. Alan. We had this conversation. Do up the button Alan. before my mother hears me? <laughs> no. Oh, that was perfect. <laughs> that was perfect. <laughs> that was perfect. <laughs> Woo! I'm excited, man. <laughs> I've never got that 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 perfect before. I love it. <laughs> yeah, Josh right. Josh yeah, no. So we actually talked about this on uh on our other podcast, Bear Fans with a Brain, because there's um there's some some scouts that are looking to jump up, and there's um I can't remember what his name is now. JB, he's like like um an advisor for the the Patriots and he might actually be one of the runners for the bears. And there's that kind of connection. I can't remember his damn name now. Ah, that's going to drive me nuts, but there might be that connection and I'm not opposed to it. I'm not because, you know, you've seen a lot of, a lot of head coaches get second chances and they end up better for it. Right. We talk about that all the time and I'm we not opposed to second chances. Bill Belichick's a good example. He's the ultimate He's example. the number one example of somebody who got another chance, you know. You could go down the list of guys like that. So I wouldn't be opposed to it. I just want to know who he's bringing with him, what his plan is for Justin, and how he's going to um, execute the plan. And if he's learned from his days with the Broncos, the way he handled the whole Tebow thing, everything else, the way he handled Cutler – all that crap, like that stuff, needs to change. 
they it does, but I think so. My uh, my knock on McDaniel's is not as big of a knock as maybe on some. Yeah. My knock on him with the Bears is this. Yes, people do deserve a second chance. Now, was his time in Denver just god awful? No. He started out hot, like I think they were like seven and one or well, something. remember, remember the whole the, the Tebow experiment plus yeah. but the, the problem with the problem with Josh McDaniel <laughs> was he becomes a victim of Belichick's success because now they expect what Belichick yeah. did to trickle down into him. But I've never really seen him awarded the opportunity to develop a franchise quarterback. Yes. And that's what scares me. Not saying that he can't, but when have we ever seen him awarded the chance to develop? Well, and we cannot give Tom Brady to Josh McDaniel. We cannot. No, exactly. But the way that you know he we can do Mac Jones in right. that system, that's the way you look at it. He's not going to be able to do the same thing with Justin because that's not the same quarterback. Thank you. It's two totally different quarterbacks. Thank yeah. You. Yeah. That's why I said that's what scares me about McDaniels just a little bit. And in order for them to run that same system the New England runs here, you got to fortify that offensive line. Yeah, They are predicated on the run. They are a true short West Coast passing game. Very, very seldom. And this is what bit them in the butt the other day against the Colts. They ran the ball 40-something times, passed it three. They beat the Bills. Handled. Reversed it because the Colts put the ball in Matt, Cal- in Matt Castle, put it in uh, <laughs> Matt Jones' hands. He throws it forty times, and you see the different outcome. Yeah, yeah, but you're not running on the Colts though either. But you can play that grind out game if you have a quarterback that you yeah. know can get you first well, down. And see, league. that's what bothers me about the Colts because they lead the league in takeaways. So you're going to have a rookie quarterback throwing that much against a team, one of the best defenses in the league. And and again, that's why I, I didn't say like the I'm, game plan. I didn't. I'm kind of confused as to with all the swirlings about him. Are you all looking at the name, or are you all watching the game? So when he's actually up against yeah. some adversity, because that's not right. that's not what I want. I mean, we've seen Nagy do that with Justin. I don't yep. need to see that anymore. Yeah. I need to see. Well, look, look, hey, this weekend you'll think, you'll see it, and not to get away from the Bears too much, but like you'll see it this weekend when Buffalo goes to New England, and then Baltimore goes to Cincinnati. You really I, see. I won't like, see it again I, because you know what? I think Josh McDaniels is just gonna run the ball forty times again. He might. Like, he might. But he's he's on the. You know, he's at home. But like, but your. Oh, but you spoke. So again, we, I'm gonna give you two minutes. Your boys are in trouble. Uh, yep. Shame they lost on three Walmart. in a row. They haven't Shame won a game on. since the Bears. <laughs> you, A A B. We watched Game of Thrones. Shame. Shame. <laughs> Same. I don't know, man. It's a lot of talk. <laughs> like, hey, let's talk this time next week. I love where they they're sitting right now. They're going to go in there. They're going to take care oh, of business. I don't. I don't. You I only was, love where they're sitting because Cleveland lost and they're still in the eighth spot. I That's actually, the only reason you love it. I yeah. actually think that they I th- might they might end up being one of the worst in the division at this point because the Steelers are starting to come up. But there's the they're defense playing good with they're them. They're the Steelers are playing the ball division. right now. They're playing ball. They're not messing yeah. around, and you know, you know Cleveland's coming. I'm I'm sorry that run game is good with Cleveland. But that Raiders loss really hurt them. That Raiders loss, did. yeah, it was bad. I, I, they that makes no them seven. That makes them game. seven and seven. Well, this is shakeout so weekend, man. We'll see. It's we'll see over. where people sit after, yeah. like in the Bears this weekend. I mean, I, I don't even know if we want to. Like, where, what do you talk about there? I mean, we play Seattle. That's two teams that's playing for nothing. Russell Wilson might try to cook. Russell's going to be at home. It's going to you know, be because in Seattle. I, if, if I'm Russell Wilson right now, damn all that talk about going to the Giants. I'm go, I'm the, the head of Home Depot, the man that owns Home Depot, Arthur Blank. Yep. I'm yep. going to talk to that man and be like, what do I got to do to come to Atlanta? Trade me for Matt Ryan. And we can do some things if I'm Russell Wilson. Uh, I don't think Seattle would do that unless they're getting like a – like basically – a Lions Rams type situation where they're but getting I think they could. The first round picks. They but would get they more could. than two though. They would probably you no. You three. can't. You can't give. Remember because back to back years, you can't. You can't do that. So they would remember. They would have to do like a twenty twenty. No, not the. If if it was Seattle and Atlanta, they could trade three, and then if they did it on draft day, you can trade four. 
Oh, draft day is four. Okay. Yeah, draft day is four. The rest is three. So they would do it. They would need to do it after the draft. Yeah. They'd have to do it at the draft. I'm about to say, I wouldn't give up draft. four straight years. That's what they might. A lot of people say that's what you might have to do to get Russell Wilson. Remember the Bears talk with that? <sighs> they were talking about giving up three or four first round picks. We just didn't have it. Yeah. yeah. We just didn't have it. I, I mean, if Pace, if Pace, Pace has to go. You got to go, man. Like, you have two playoff seasons since 15. You got to go. Yeah. yeah. Hey, that's another story. You got a lot of guys, Cal, that still want to give Ryan Pace a pass because he drafted David Montgomery. Yeah. He drafted uh, – I mean, he traded for Khalil Mack. He drafted Justin Fields. Now, but I say, damn yeah, all that because day. you gave us Mike Glennon. You gave us – yeah. Mitch, Kev, Kevin White, hot garbage. Us, wait, no, I'm, I'm not even doing less, less than Adam Shaheen. You gave us <laughs> Nick Foles. I see you, you know. gave us Andy Dalton. Like, you've given us a lot of just garbage. Average. <laughs> I mean, T again yes. at the same time. <laughs> so, like, hot Ryan, garbage. like, literally, if I'm, if the Bears hired a consultant firm, if the Bears hired Ozzy Newsom Inc. to consult. Hey, Ted man, Phillips man. on down, gotta go. Literally, yeah. Ted yeah. Phillips on down has to go. Agree. Easy. All right, man. Well, we we've been running our mouths. Well, you all have been running your mouths for two hey, hours. I'm still ready to go, man. I, for I'm, two I'm, hours. So, uh, man, let's go ahead and get some shout outs and get on yeah. out of here. Go ahead, Cal. So you, yeah, man. Let me shout real quick. Let me, let me shout the guys from Loyola. Um, I want to have them back. Definitely in season. I want to have them back. The girls are off. Yeah, I like those kids. G sheets. That's the guy, right? Like Gavin was tremendous. Uh, Mr. Bucks for coming on, like quarterback in that. T Nick, thanks for setting it up, man. He, he Gavin was great. Let's, we should definitely try to have him back in the spring too. And then everybody in the chat Ooh. seemed like it was busy tonight. Um, <laughs> Yeah, man. Thank you guys for having me on. And then I'll be I'll be at uh, Naperville Central tomorrow. There's a ton of Christmas tournaments, so hopefully next time that we're on, I'll have some good hoop stories for you guys. Nice. Naperville. Let me two more quick shout outs. Uh, Bennett, the girls of Bennett, number three, taking taking down the number one team in the state last night. And then I want to shout out Mad Fitness in in Pennsylvania, right over the line where where Sheets and I kind of do our off season. Um, those guys have me in all week. And then they're watching the pot tonight. I want to give them a shout out as well. I'm done. I'll let y'all go go to it. JB. JB. So for the first time, I'm gonna go ahead and get a crying eye sign. I ain't see my mom on the night, man. I, I know. Up. She probably wrapping kit, uh, Christmas gifts or something, you know, whatever. But uh, didn't see her on tonight. But you know, I know she's there. Um, again, just. Crazy shout out to those kids, Cal. They had a lot of energy, a lot of love for you, man. You was on fire tonight, man. Love to see those guys. That's what it's all about, the future. And hopefully we'll be talking about a few of them in the next coming years. You know, love that. Um, also, shout out to Gavin Sheets. Like, man, one of the up-and-coming youngsters of our beloved White Sox. Class act, killer, monster on the field. Can't wait to see what his future brings. Can't wait for the White Sox to be on the top of that hill. And then shout out to us because, you know, like, hey, we form like Voltron and we make it happen, man. I love uh, it. Yes, yeah. sir. I love it. Hey, B, before you go real quick, I've, I'm an uproar tonight. Wells and Schiller, Wells and Goth, wherever we are. Like Christmas parties, they got you. private rooms. Like, you, yeah, about yeah, to say you're here, right? That was actually going to be part of my shout out. I was going to ask you where the hell you were. <laughs> Yeah, man, this is this is uproars, kind of private, top floor. I'm I'm looking well as I'm looking at the fireplace in like Old Town's one of my favorite neighborhoods in, in Chicago. We'll we'll get to it when we have Mark. When we when we go out for, for cocktails with, with Mark Chi Greco, we'll, we'll end up here. Oh, I can't wait for that day. Oh, we we gonna bar hop a little bit. <laughs> we're gonna run. We're gonna run crazy for sure. <laughs> you all good, eh? Or uh, JB? I almost yeah. called you AB. <laughs> I almost called you me. <laughs> um, looking at the man in the mirror, man. Yeah, right. Oh. Apparently. <laughs> I, I got one more shout out. Shout out to Spider-Man No Way Home. Oh, my God. 
we don't talk about that here. We'll talk about that on Thursday. <laughs> we don't need to talk about that here. Terrence ain't going to be about all that. Terrence is, look at him. He's rubbing his eyes over there. He's he's ready to call it. So I'm going to make mine quick. First and foremost, I got to say shout out to these, these fans that we have. My God, I am going to start calling them the Cal Christmas Tree Squad. Uh. That we got Fair enough. in here. All of a sudden, enough, where when, is it? whenever Cal Mafia took over this podcast, Cal Mafia, the numbers went crazy. The chat went nuts. I'm like, what is going on here? Oh. I couldn't, I couldn't even keep up. It was so crazy. So first of all, thank you to all, all of you in the chat, all of these Cal preppers. We love you, man. Please, please keep coming back. Cleat. Bring some energy for us. We love it. Thank you. And, Cal, always thank you to you for bringing these guys over because thank it wouldn't you guys. be the same. Of course. It would not be the same without you. Our buddy Gavin Sheets, appreciate that interview. He was a great guy, humble kid, just exactly as I thought he was going to be. Thank you for coming on. We appreciate it. Sorry about the question that I asked. I had to ask. I knew he wasn't going to answer it, but I had to ask anyway, but – awesome guest as usual you guys love you amazing job as usual and that's really it for me i think i'm done it's all you t all right well definitely shout out to the uh holiday brunch that ab I, just flashed the holiday I brunch just wanted to remind you, holiday brunch af not as fuck oh damn it <laughs> <laughs> holiday brunch funny. after the fact because oh. it's on january 8th after the fact after the holidays are over so uh it's gonna be at tilly's 1455 ring road in calumet city um make sure you secure your spot i'm gonna give out some gift cards for it also um i might have a, a secret code where you get like free drinks so What's stay that code, cool. huh? What's that code? I don't know yet. <laughs> I need that code. Stay tuned. <laughs> stay tuned. But um, as for my shouts, uh, first shout out to Gavin Sheets. Thanks, uh, thanks for coming on the podcast. Very interesting, insightful. Definitely one of the young, up and coming uh players. First baseman, uh, maybe right field. Who knows? Um, but definitely one of the one of the most promising up and coming players that the White Sox have to offer. Um, shout out to Cal for making that happen. Uh, shout out to you guys for holding it down. Shout out to my man Bucks for coming yes. in. I forgot about and Bucks. you know I bowed out to him, but I definitely should bow out to him because he's one of the pioneers. And he's a big White Sox guy. So I thought that it was appropriate for me to give the reins to him. So shout out to Bucks. Shout out to everybody in the chat. George Smith, uh, once this is over, maybe you can go give Cal a kiss. Um, <laughs> Mike McCarthy, uh, uh, shout out to you, man. Uh, yes, it was a great segment. Michael McNaughton, all these are new people. Shout out to y'all for being on the podcast. If you left, shout out to you anyway. Hope you come back. Uh, everybody else that was in the chat, I didn't see the normal like Chris Edgerton no. and Mama. I didn't. I didn't see those. It's a Shiny whole new Chaplin. world today. I didn't see them. But if you are lurking, I appreciate y'all. And as always. All the lurkers, we appreciate y'all, and we had a hater today. Oh, oh, we did. I wasn't we, even gonna bring it up. We had a hater today. Hater, that's well, for you. He can't hear you because I blocked his ass immediately. So, well, that's okay. all right. Haters, that's for you. Speaking of hate. this, they do. I want to give a shout out to that T Biz for for oh, this sure. wonderful shirt. I love that shirt. Says fuck them kids that ain't mamas too. Oh wow. I need that in my life. 
Now you talk about aggressive. That's pretty aggressive. <laughs> I love that. Shirt. But it's the hey, one shirt. Not just the kids, know. but the mamas too. <laughs> yeah, the mamas too. Can't even love the baby mamas. But kids, y'all should probably be in bed by now. But if you're not, we just playing. We love the kids. We love all the kids. And we love all the kids get what they want for Christmas and have a very good Christmas. <laughs> and your mamas, we love y'all mamas too. Humbug. <laughs> Especially the single one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Terrence is all about that. <laughs> single mamas, mamas, baby mamas, mamas. But um, yeah. yeah. So I think that's about it for my shouts. Oh, and, uh, yeah. That's it. That's it. Oh, any family that I might have, I usually don't have any family support. But if I do, I appreciate y'all. Hope you come back anyway. And I think that I am done next week though who is on next week oh tone tone capone from the radio from wgci he's gonna be on we're also gonna have a high school official that is gonna be on cal that should be fun oh for you. boy yeah, oh, that's what all these bad calls lately i'm gonna oh. ask him about a thousand questions about <laughs> bad calls so that be easy that's my guys do you guys go to school fun. for this or what? <laughs> that is surely gonna be fun. But um, yeah, so I, I I think I'm done. So I will say peace out. Merry Christmas, y'all. Peace what? out. What? That's it? Hey, Merry Christmas or something. I, I'll, I'll, I'll let the I'll let the clip say the rest. Oh, yeah, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Well, we'll be back before the New Year, but Merry Christmas, everybody. Hope you have a wonderful Christmas and peace out. Happy Kwanzaa. <laughs> we out! Later. <laughs> we out! Uh, that's it. Yeah, we done here. Yeah. We out! Okay, so we out! If you're not watching this, flag on you. This has been a Chicago Clubhouse Network production. We out!